trying that shit on me It's acoustic, acoustic oh, guitar. Yeah, very cool. A little Timmy Mingle there, Tarzan and Trains. Very cool. Have you ever, you never heard his music? Just heard his I, po- his poetry. I, you know, I may have caught him before over the past few years, but I did check out that he had like a, a poetry book at Press. Yeah, Cafe he works there too. He's one of the okay. baristas. <laughs> he was probably one of the people that got me my coffee. Yeah, and, and I you're like reading his book and he's just yeah. staring at you. Oh, yeah, I book. don't mean to be oblivious to things at times, <laughs> but it's Saturday morning and I haven't had coffee. Yeah, you know, I'm not a coffee drinker. But everyone who I know is, they love pressed. Yes, it's very good. Yeah. Very I'm good. more of a tea guy. Mm-hmm. What, is it, what, what did I have that night? So when Tim did his book release, I helped. I did his, I did like, I hosted it. Okay. And then we had like a QA. and a It was mm-hmm. really fun. Um, the whole time I was like, just don't curse. Don't be, <laughs> don't be you. Just don't do you. Um, yeah. So it was fun. I had a really good time. But I had a London fog. Okay. That was really good. It's like milk and tea and... Yeah, they had some type of cinnamon latte thing, tea latte that gr- a girl had the other there the other day that I was like, ooh, mm-hmm. what's that? And he said it was tea, and I I don't know, I just needed hard black coffee. Yeah, so that's what I got. I love how Pottsville just has these cool little stuff, these little spots you can kind of hit up and and absolutely do, and, and enjoy some stuff. Absolutely, and they're, you know they're always welcome. <clears throat> You know, like Janet Sage always has great, oh great God, coffee. Her tea is fantastic because she has yeah, the flavors and yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. Her hours are strange. Yeah. Well, I know that she's open um, like morning to afternoon, like gets a lunch rush in there because the times I've done um, art shows there where I pick things up, there were people in there for breakfast and lunch and yeah. everything. So Yeah, I've never had a meal there. But I, I also work like in weird hours. So mm-hmm. the time I get off work, I'll Oh, I'm the same done. way. Like I didn't realize that, you know, you never realize there are people that in, in different uh, yeah. different work lives than you and, and, and everything. Always uh, experiencing the patronage in Schuylkill County when you're not. Yeah. Um, so just, we had a w- interesting intro there, but, uh, if you guys like what you hear the rest of the show, if you stick around, hopefully you do hit that like and subscribe button, hit us the follow. Um, I'll let my guest here introduce himself in a moment. Um, if you read the description and you already know the name, but, uh, <laughs> so we're going to talk, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, this, this one, I don't know how long it's going to go. I, you know, we might be here for a week because there's a lot of fun week, stuff to talk about week. a week long podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if you guys, like I said, check the links below. We do have a merch page. If you want to grab some cool merch, it's there. And then check out the other shows on the network. But uh, do you want to give yourself a little intro here? Yeah. My name is Charles Moran. I'm a local illustrator artist uh, from Minersville, Pennsylvania. I have a brand, Horror Prints, that I take to shows around the country. And I illustrate silkscreen posters, T-shirts. I sculpt pins. I do enamel pins. I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I've been doing it for about 15 years, um, all told. It started out doing band merch, which I still do for bands and promoters. However, it kind of parlayed into me doing my own horror-branded um, thing uh, about 10 years ago and starting to take it out into the world and doing horror conventions across the country and all other events, punk rock, flea markets, all kinds of fun mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, Your heart, your horror art is your art in general is a great time. Thank you. Um, one of your one of my favorite pieces that you did, uh, you've done, is actually being used now on a comedy tour, right? Wh- which one would what that the, be? The, the, the Warriors. Oh, yeah, the Warriors piece. Yes. So back in June, I did a poster for the Colonial Theater down in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, that screens retro films and and everything. And they did a 40th anniversary screening for the Warriors. Um, a legendary classic cult film from the 70s. My favorite. How could you not know it? Can you dig so, it? So uh, I illustrated a scene from that, which was the famous bathroom scene from like pretty much the last quarter of the movie where mm-hmm. they fight. I forget the name of the gang, but the gang on roller skates. So I, um, yeah, I'm terrible. I, wanna, I, I think it's a play on like, roller derby. You know, it, 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 yeah. Oh. 
Eddie, I'll you talk. I'll go. I'll find Eddie, out. Eddie Huzel. I um, I illustrated this, and uh, I, I meticulously hand drew the illustration and did the poster for it, and um, did it for a screening there. Then a few months later, um, I was contacted by a comedian that I do posters for at least once every year, every two years, Pat and Oswald, and he wanted to use that for a show that he was doing in Huntington, New York. So I basically took the illustration that I had done, and the main character from the Warriors, I had transposed Patton's face over his. Mm -hmm. so I basically just snapped out parts of the illustration I had done in Photoshop, and then drew, you know, a little bit of a chunkier body build to it. That's all. How did you get in touch with, like, how did you become, like, cool with Patton Oswalt? Well, it, it's funny because in how I started with any of and all of this is doing gig posters just for bands or promoters and just how relationships work. You meet, one, you meet one person who meets another and things like that. And uh, I knew an illustrator from Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, Brian Meth, who's still a great illustrator out there, still does great posters, has done them for tons of awesome bands. So shout out to Brian. But Brian put me in touch with him, and I started working with Patton, I believe it was in 2009. And we've done like maybe seven or eight projects together, like He's a fantastic poster. comedian. He is. He's yeah. and he's a really nice guy. He's very supportive of the arts. I'm certainly not the only illustrator he's ever used um, to do posters or that to do packaging things like that. Um, so it's always nice to see somebody you know that's a good person and successful and tries to help other people out from all over the world. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. that, that's a great poster too. That bathroom scene, it, it, the art reminded me of because obviously in the movie it's a tighter room that they're yeah. fighting in, and, and your art makes it look like it's in a bigger room. Yeah, and it reminds me of I don't remember the actual issue, but it reminds me there's a I actually bought the art of it at a horror convention, um, but it's Batman and or the, the con I mean the Steel City mm -hmm. con, and it's Batman in like a warehouse, okay. and as he's fighting and like all all the villains are hanging off him or busting into the windows, and it's pretty much him taking on his entire villain gallery. Oh wow! And it was like just that style of art, and it looked really cool. You know. It's interesting because I know where I drew the influence for that from. I like I knew the intensity of that scene from the movie because there's just so much that goes on one after another after another of just jump shot, jump shot. That, you know, and it was hard to pick up. Like, how am I going to frame this? How am I going to frame this with the proper action to get the proper poses and have everybody in there? And I wanted to do it in a panoramic fashion like I had done, but I was heavily influenced by the spectacular Spider-Man issues from the early 90s. Eric Larson, excellent illustrator. Mm -hmm. If you're a comic book fan, you, sh you should know Eric Larson from The Savage Dragon. Also went on to become a USA cartoon that was kind of famous-ish for a little in the 90s, Sunday morning cartoons. But he was always one to do that, these big dynamic panoramic illustrations of uh, Spider-Man fighting the, the Sinister Six at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was very much that. It sounds very much to what you're saying yeah. of Batman fighting the Arkham Asylum villains. You yeah, know? it was like a very comic book inspired yeah, art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, that's the great thing about illustration is you can always explore different perspectives. Like the only limit you have are time and budget. <laughs> yeah. What now? If they were to announce that they're going to remake the Warriors, mm -hmm. would you be for it or against it? I mean, it, it would depend a lot upon a lot of things. Who did it? Uh, what they were trying to do with it. But uh, like most things, I would probably just be happy that we have the Warriors that we have. Yeah. You Could know? you imagine like a Warriors, and the Warriors like video a... game? Hello. Yeah. For, I think it was PlayStation 2. Yep. That was classic. Yep. It, it, it like filled all the gaps in the story that you needed. So like we're spoiled in that respect. If they remake something, they've probably already made like one or two video games off of it that you can exist in your universe yep. with, you know? The only thing I would be interested in if they remade it is if they – like if just I mean the fight scenes were awesome for their time but I think our fight scenes now in movies like John Wick and stuff were yes. just like it's just like that you get the people who do like those choreographies and like add that to the Warriors yeah that's a badass movie it could be could be. <laughs> it could be. Could they capture that feel, though, of the 70s? They got to keep it in the 70s, though. Yeah. Like, you know there are directors that can do that. You know Quentin Tarantino can do that. Um, so there are certain, I mean, probably, oh, who am I thinking of? There Will Be Blood director. 
Boogie Nights, There Will Be Blood. Uh, I'm terrible when some Tom, uh Paul Thomas Anderson. Paul Thomas Anderson can definitely set the tone in his in his storytelling. Yeah. So, but it's a hard thing to come off authentic with. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that movie is so good. Yeah. I, that, that was one of the movies where me and my little brother are 11 years apart. Now, Warriors is not even my generation. Mm -hmm. That was a movie that I stumbled across. And then I was like, this is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. And then I, yeah. it's one of those things where I was like, all right, I need to put my brother onto a new movie. Yeah. And it's something he's never, ever heard of. Or one of those movies that, like, unless you know someone who knows someone who knows about the movie, you're, the only way you're going to see it. And I made him watch it one night. And to this day, he's like, it's still one of his favorite movies sure. of all time. It's it's just funny because that's kind of the story with me with that movie. Um, but, like, another side note. I think the video game got me into the movie. Probably. Probably. That would have been... When was that released? It would have been 2005 or six. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. I was in high school game. at the time. Yeah. So like at that at that time, I was um, I had graduated college. I had went to King's College and got a degree in mass communications and media technologies, a bachelor's degree. And I wasn't too sure with what what path that was going to open for me. Mm -hmm. I was doing video work. I had done a bunch of stuff for NASCAR, like video and sound editing, oh, cool. like freelance gigs and stuff like that, but nothing, nothing steady. But I knew that I had been exposed to these computer programs, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, and that these somehow unlocked key. They, these were keys to another world. Yeah. And so I spent years like honing that, getting better, incorporating illustration into that. And that spawned me doing posters. Mm -hmm. So there were many nights I would sit in my parents' attic when I still lived with my parents and um, sit in their attic and just draw posters for shows down in Philly. And I would sit there with the Warriors VHS in, just watch Warriors every night on repeat. So that's why I know the dialogue and really why I love the movie. So it's ironic to touch on that as a milestone. It's funny how uh, there are milestones or markers in your life and you, you could kind of look back sometimes and just see these beacons in the distance, yeah. you know? It, I, to me, it's, it's cool too, like when someone takes like how you with the posters, um, or even that, like you take a, a iconic film and you make a poster out of it. Like how with the drive-in, like you do like the Universal Monsters and you'll take a scene from that. And it might not even be like an iconic scene, but it's a scene that's still important, but it's not something that gets put at use a lot. And then someone uses that and makes art out of it. It's just really... And, and, and then it just kind of reinvigorates you like, I have to go watch that movie again. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It's great. And, you know, it's wonderful that there's really been a rebirth of things with that and an appreciation for the tactile things again, which is odd, you, you know, in 2020 that that would be happening mm -hmm. with everything in the world going digital. And it just seems like humans want physical interaction material things tangible things that are always going to need to be introduced to their lives yeah i think it's getting to the point now when it comes to art and creativity that um people are leaning like i don't, I don't want to say we're getting smarter but i think we're getting to the point where we respect talent more mm -hmm. and in like how people don't go to theaters as much as they used to but if you have something like a, 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 a mom and pop place, like a theater like that, mm -hmm. people are more inclined to go to that or like where they have like a, a maybe a smaller theater or they, they want to sit at home and hang out with friends or sure. instead of going and buying art at like a gallery, they'll buy local art. Like I think people are starting to realize like in, to cutting out middlemen and going straight to people. Sure. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's only better for artists. I mean, anybody who has ever tried to pursue art to sustain their living will tell you that anybody that's a musician will tell you how hard it is to get things on a level where you're getting a steady check for doing something that represents your art. People form. think I make money on this, you know, spoiler alert, yeah. not at all. Yeah, it's, it's very, <laughs> it's very difficult, but it's, yeah. that's not the reason you're doing it, you know, but along, I love meeting people and talking along the way, things open up and you've got to also make sure that, you know, you're not being taken advantage of and that mm -hmm. you're being, you know, that you're willing to stand up for yourself and, you know, that's that's all part of growing and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, cause I remember I, I talked to you about like, I like when they make the steel books of new movies, like they'll take a new mm -hmm. movie and redo it and put steel books. Sure. And I remember I was like, 
why are you not in this market? And you're like, yeah. I tried. They don't pay. Well, <laughs> they, <laughs> or they don't. that's that's part of it. I used to I used to work with a gallery out in Los Angeles, Gallery 1988. That's a big gallery, and they have a lot of contacts with a lot of those film studios out there. However, from my experience, it. Um, I was never in the conversation for those types of things. And by my impression, it was the fact that that was based on how many prints you were moving through the gallery, not necessarily what the artwork was. It's not to say that it was bad artwork that makes the steel books. It's phenomenal. Yeah. But that's I love, where, I love that's those reissues. Where, that's where you're, you're talking about cutting out the middleman. Like, I, those people were great to me. They gave me a lot of great opportunities. But there was a point at which our relationship got to, and I was like, you know, I need to cut out that middleman. I'm mm -hmm. the guy that's still going out to conventions and doing conventions, and that just made less sense for me. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I wouldn't want to do steel books for MGM. It's just I'm just not my work's not crossing their paths. I suppose. Yeah. You know, if it ever does, tell me. I, yeah, I need to buy great. that movie. I would love that. <laughs> and, and you know, and there are there are situations where I know people will do artwork as a trade off. You know, like I was saying, but that. I, I don't think it exists at that level, maybe at a smaller distribution level, mm -hmm. but yeah. Now, when like some like the the like a, a theater hits you up and says, "Hey, we're going to do this mm -hmm. movie," is there certain times where you're like, "Oh man, like I like this movie. I can't wait to do something like this." Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I've been very fortunate with the Colonial to have the relationship I've had with them the past few years, where I've gotten a lot of commissions from them to do posters for either their cult cinema screenings or their first Friday Fright Night screenings that they do once a month down there. So I've got to do posters for Running Man, um, Suspiria. Uh, I had done one for Night of the Creeps prior, which is a great movie. Uh, but I just did the, the Warriors one, which is a big one. And then also I just did an Exorcist one in the That's fall, fantastic. which was which was great. Um, That's, that one's gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. No. So I did that. I did the original poster for the screening. And then I did an art print version on a holofoil paper that really adds an extra depth behind the illustration. So it's a silk screen, a one color silk screen. That's a black on a... Uh, a rainbow holofoil, or excuse me, a white holofoil paper. So it gives like a misty, cloudy illusion behind the actual print itself. Mm -hmm. And you can by you can go on my uh, Instagram and check that out at Horror Prints at Instagram. That's where like a lot more of those shots are of, of things like that. Of yeah, my portfolio. just to kind of give a, a description um, for your your ear holes out there. Um, that was like a little my little yes. warriors for you yeah. babe, for you bappas <laughs> out there. Um, it's it's the iconic box art. What would a spin on it? Yes. So it's it's the cardinal coming to the house, and the and and the street light is shining on him. Mm -hmm. But he took the scene where they cut to Reagan as 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 the devil, and just like, oh shit, he's here. We're going to have this battle. Yes. And it's Reagan's eyes with the the cardinal like over mm -hmm. superimposed over it. It's like a collage almost. The the nice thing was about that, like um, when I was laying out the. Uh, to the the design of everything and i knew what i was that i was going to lay the illustration within the inverted cross i knew and it's an inverted yeah, cross which is great i, I knew <laughs> that it would give an interesting juxtaposition to uh the priest and reagan that's so, the climax of the yeah, movie that's the yeah, that's the showdown and i and the fact that she's turned upside down if you look on it straight forward and you know he's kind of gazing up at her it gives perfect credence to what their relationship becomes and she is throughout mm -hmm. the whole movie yeah so thank you for pointing that out <laughs> yeah it's such a f that that movie I am not a religious person. Okay. Me, me and spirituality have a weird bond. Mm -hmm. um, but that movie still frightens me. Absolutely. That's one of the movies that I have a hard time to this day. Like, I, there's not many movies. Like, I, I, like, listen, I'll watch any movie by myself. That one's tough. Yeah. Not easy to watch by yourself. Okay. That's a, that's, you have to have somebody in the room with you for that one. Sure. That's a tough one. Have you seen uh, Vich or Witch? No. That, that movie that just came out mm -mm. a few years ago? That's pretty. That's pretty that's scary. The one, is that the one you had to read the subtitles the whole time? No, there's no subtitles in it. And there's, I know there was one that everyone was like, "It's the next Exorcist," and you had to read the subtitles. It I was don't. like it was like a demon witch movie. No, no, not this. 
This I wish is my, wonderful, if, though. I wish my wife was home. She would. I, she yeah, never joins that, a podcast, that, but this would be the one I'd want her to be on. That movie scares the shit out of me. I just watched it the other night. I couldn't go to bed. It was like 3 a.m. I put it on. Really? Yeah. Well, where, where'd you watch that? It's just at my place. I mean, like, is it on, like, uh, It's on Netflix, yeah. It's on Netflix now, okay. but I, had, I have a copy of it, but... um. Uh, I watched it and it scared the shit out of me until the sun came up. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 the things that scare me with The Exorcist are not even the things that I think are supposed to scare you. Like the callbacks. Like, so if you're not paying attention, like when the priest, when the first priest comes to the house and he's doing like, and it's one of those things where I tell people this and some people are like, oh yeah, that was a cool scene. But to me, it freaked me the fuck out. Like, where he's like, hey, his father, do you have any spare change? And then she goes in the room and he's like, father, do you have any spare change? Like, how the fuck does that little girl know that? Sure. You know what I mean? Like, sure. it's like the devil's watching. And then like how he's talking to her like her mother. And yeah. then as she's gurgling and talking, you hear like hundreds of voices of like legions of things just, inside of her. It was unbelievable. It's just it's fascinating to me. And it's fascinating to humans because. I, I know for myself, I, I went to Catholic school my whole life, and I remember in having classes in the late 90s with Father Jankaitis at Nativity <laughs> and him showing us some pretty weird stuff. I'm now 39, and let me tell you, it's still I've, I've, your seen, brain. I've seen weird stuff since then, and that still stands out as some of the weirdest stuff I've ever seen. He showed us stuff. We had a class on, like, cults, and he showed us all sorts of weird stuff. There was cults and exorcisms, so Holy there was, shit. like, actual videos that— I wish I like, went to Catholic school. <laughs> yeah, that, that like, months, I guess, like, diocese or the Catholic Church had put out that were films about, like, accounts of exorcism. And it's just interesting because I'm not saying that I believe in exorcism, but I'm just saying the phenomenon of it is interesting. And it's interesting to see how it's evolved over the last 20 years. Was it a misdiagnosis of mental health? Yeah. You know, or am I wrong mm -hmm. and completely full of it? Yeah. You never know. <laughs> and that's the kind of scary no. part about yeah, it. Yeah. Unknown. Such unknown a great movie. Where, where was, now, you probably know more than I, where was that movie shot at? I know the stairs are really iconic. That's in DC. Is it? The stairs. I believe so. Yeah. It's right. It's in DC. The stairs. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. I, that, that's definitely a trip. Because, though. um, that convention that I've been monster mania also does a convention in Maryland and, they did an exorcist theme, like, I think in the fall, and they ran a bus trip to the stairs. Really? So, yeah. There's there's two sets of stairs in, in history right now that go down as great movie stairs, and, and that's one of them, and the other one's now the Joker film. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember looking that up after I saw the movie, and people were like, don't come here. You got stabbed. Yeah. And, and, like, people still go there and shoot videos. I'm like, but everything I've read about it, I'm like, no, that's in the kind of place that... You don't even want to park a car if you have it there. It's funny because yeah. this one this one dude on World Star Hip Hop Hip Hop was like, "Yo, I've never seen this many white people in the Bronx before." Yeah. <laughs> or Brooklyn, it was in Brooklyn, yeah. yeah. Our Bronx or Brooklyn, but I'm, it was funny. I'm all right. I'm yeah. all right. I don't need to go to see that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, and then uh, Exorcist too. Could I watched it and I was like, I, it didn't do it for me because yeah. Linda Blair got so in insanely attractive yeah. that even when they put the makeup on her, I'm like, you're hot as fuck. Yeah. She was so hot. Just turns into a weird kink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was like in that nightgown and she's like obviously like 18, 19 years old now. Yeah. And she's like, I'm supposed to be scary. I'm like, no, you're sexy as hell, yeah, Linda Blair. She, got, she definitely, <laughs> like, what was the other one that she did? I think she did Hell House, was it? That I saw, it's a terrible movie, but she's terribly beautiful throughout yeah. the whole thing. And like, you're you're not even yeah, scared. I don't even care that it's a terrible movie <laughs> and the, the the monster in it isn't that really that cool. But yeah. You know, and then a few years later she dates Rick James and do you ever see that? No. So she dated Rick James and they took these like risque pictures. I guess because, you know, he's Rick James and he probably fed her things that aren't <laughs> legal. The and, milk's uh, gone bad. Yeah, and, and, and like and so there's like pictures of like her straddling him naked. But you don't like you don't see any nip or anything, but like she's definitely naked, like yeah. standing next to Jerry Curl Rick James. It's awesome. It is. Well, didn't uh, is Rob Zombie like use his actual home video porn in the beginning of House of a Thousand Corpses? Oh my God! Well, I don't know in that the, it's in the intro video. I don't, I don't know that it's porn, but I know that he filmed Sherry naked. Yeah, like for that, I remember hearing that on I think the audio commentary. Maybe it was porn. Yeah, 
Maybe it was. But you don't like you. Just, but it's like it looks like I know what you mean. The, it, like scattered the, screen. Yeah, it's yeah. like I think it has like a red overlay yeah. over those. Yeah, yeah. So, what type of horror movie draws you in? Like, what is your oh, go to? My go to. I would say I'm a sucker for anything probably made in the early 80s that I've never heard of. But I mean, has, like, are you like a slasher guy? You're psychological? I'd say probably. I probably lean more to slashers. I'm yeah. a sucker for slashers. I'm a monster guy. Yeah, man. I like. I do like monster movies. I do like cr- – like Critters is a big one for me. Um, body – I love body horror. Um, a lot of different things. I do like psychological stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm the type of guy too where I'm like, like where you don't see the monster the whole time. Mm-hmm. I'd like it, but then I'm like, come on, give me a little bit, like. Yeah. And then you finally see it, and if it's not good, you're like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, like I'm a, I love my King Kongs, my Godzillas. I like mm-hmm. monster movies, but then like cre- like critters. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dune and did a Dune or uh, Tremors? Tremors, yes. Tremors is, oh. <laughs> Dude, Tremors. Um, yeah, just creatures are monsters. Like yeah. I'm a huge. I, uh, people make fun of me all the time. Cloverfield. Yeah, I loved that. Cloverfield movie. was cool. Yeah, Ten Cloverfield Lane was good. I like that. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I thought I didn't understand Cloverfield Paradox. Um, Too sci-fi for me. I didn't I'm not see, a sci-fi no, guy. I, I started that, but I didn't. I was like, ah. Uh. Yeah, it's too much. But I, you know, I dug Cloverfield. I do like a good monster movie. Yeah, and and when I say monsters too, like that's vampires, werewolves. Sure, mo- sure. Like, um, one of my favorite ones is um, I never seen the original, and people say if that the remake sucked and people hated it, um, but the original is a hundred times better. And I've never, I still haven't seen it, but Let Me In. Okay. I've never seen the original, but the one what they did with the girl who went up being kick ass and Carrie. Okay. That one was a fantastic. Okay. You ever see that one? I haven't seen it. No. So that one is she's legit like eleven year old or nine year old girl, but she was dying and she gets bit by oh, a vampire. And is is that a remake of Let the Right One In? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've never seen, seen the remake. I've seen some of the original. Is that Russian or something like that? I think so. Or Japanese. I I saw that years ago. It was good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I just think she's a good actress. Like yeah. when she did Carrie, I liked Carrie. Yeah, I like. Okay. I thought that was better than the original Carrie. Really? Yeah. The re- the remake? Yeah, the one with her, not the one with um the later ones, but the one with her, where she they actually do- they did they, they dove more into her supernatural abilities, and it wasn't like that she just isn't the one with Angela Bettis, is it? No, is there I, one with Chloe Bettis? Chloe Savigny. Yeah. Oh, no, the girl who played in Kick Ass and um, oh okay and. Chloe, I'm, what the hell's her name? I'm terrible with names. I'm, I'm terrible too. Yeah, it's all right. You, you remember? You ever see Kick Ass? N- Kick Ass and Hit Girl. Yes, she I saw Hit- the first one. Yes, well, she's the little girl who was a Cage. Yeah, the purple headed girl. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. She ends up playing Carrie. Okay, when she gets like good. Oh man, how many Carries have they made? So there's the original with Sissy Spacek. I thought there was one made in the early 2000s, a remake with Angela Bettis. Then they did. Then they did one with uh, what's her name, who played Meg in Family Guy. Um, they did. I think so. Carrie's Revenge or something like that. Oh my goodness, Mila um, Kunis. Mila Kunis. I think Mila she Kunis. Is, let me tell you, okay. she's attractive as well. I am not. I'm not one to be like swooning over uh, celebrity heartthrobs, but that Mila Kunis, man, she could put the asses in the seats. <laughs> I think she did. I could be wrong. Freaking Meg. Yeah, fucking Meg. Yeah, Meg. <laughs> I could have sworn she played She played in a, one of the carries. I could be... I, if I'm wrong, I'm an idiot. I apologize. Oh, my god. I see so many movies, they all blend together. I know. I know. Um, I think it was I, Revenge like, of Carrie. So, like... This is uh, why I need Heidi. Heidi, watch it. There's not... Like, my wife's horror movie... There she is. Come here. Come sit down. No, no come sit down. Whoa. Come over here. We're talking horror movies at night. No, I heard I was looking for the <laughs> You're creeping. You've met Charles before? Yeah, we yeah. met once before. How are you? I'm all, I'm the one always ta- I'm ta- always tagging you on his art because mm-hmm. I'm like hinting at you. I want you to buy it because <laughs> <laughs> she's in charge of the money. She's the boss. There you go. Got throw him on. There's a movie on uh, Netflix he just talked about called Witch. I didn't watch it. And he said it's fucking terrifying. Is it? I didn't it watch is. it yet. Oh, I got to turn her Absolutely around. terrifying. I think I have it on my list, but I didn't uh, watch it yet. What's her name? The girl. Chloe Grace Mortez. Okay. Moritz. 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 Okay. The one from Carrie. Okay. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Mila Kunis play a Carrie? No. No? I like okay. the, uh, the revenge. She... Oh, Carrie maybe. to the rage. The rage. 
Did you look the up Mila Kunis? Burning Rage. I don't... Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't remember. Is there pig's blood in that one, too? I'm not How sure. How many times could you reuse the concept of pouring blood on something? <laughs> They'll find a way. Right? It smells like grapefruit in here. It's, it's the beer. Maybe the beer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't find her movies, but I don't... I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. So um, we were talking about his some of his art and some movies. Well, you're you're she's 100 percent a slasher. Awesome. Yeah. She loves her slashers. Yeah. Great. What's your favorite slasher movie? Scream. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your scream couple. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Who's your Who's the favorite your favorite celebrity you've ever met? <sighs> That's tough. Don't let me down because I I we're playing newlyweds right now. Oh no. Probably Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. I don't know. It's a toss up between who and who. Her and Christina Ricci. Really? Ooh. Man, I was way off. Christina Who'd you say? Who I said you were a really big fan of Daniel Harris. Christina Ricci. Oh, yeah. She was good. Yeah, she is. Yeah. She's wonderful. Yeah. She's wonderful. Did and you see See No Evil 2? I don't think I... No, I didn't. Ooh, With no. Kane. No. Kane from... Uh, I, just, I just actually watched the first one they last did a part year. Two, That's the one the Soskas did, right? The Soska twins, uh, I believe, yeah. did that. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think they were at the last Monster Mania. Yeah. Well, he goes. He does vendors at Monster Mania. I know. Yep. You're at the one this weekend. Yep. I... I'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I'm supposed to go. Yeah. I'm so bummed about it. Yeah. It's, it's it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see how everything is. I know there's a lot of scares about um, public health with the the coronavirus yeah. and everything. But a few celebrities backed out. I think. Yeah, of it. There, there their was, whole Chucky thing is over pretty much. It. I mean, I know. I I, I don't know, but uh, I suspect that Alex Vincent will still be there. And I know they announced Christina Elise, or I think that's her name, uh, the blonde girl from Part Two. Oh. So that'll be fun. There'll at least be be somebody there and i don't know if fiona dorif canceled as well i know her father brad did mm -hmm. brad dorif did so you know there's there's concerns with all that i understand however i'm just gonna say this tom atkins is like 81 or 83 pittsburgh native beautiful white-haired tom atkins if you don't know him from from night of the creeps <laughs> lethal weapon come on he's gonna be there he hasn't canceled he's like in his 80s He's, 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 at that he's, point, he doesn't care. <laughs> he's primed to die from Corona. Well, man, like I, I, don't, I, I respect the fact that you know there there are guys out there or gals out there that know that they can make a buck, mm -hmm. yeah. and they they're willing to go after the buck. If I were in my twilight years and I was in a movie in my twenties, thirties, forties, you're dang right. If people oh, yeah. wanted me to go across the state, I'd be like, sure. Yeah. You gonna get, get my much, room? Sure. Yeah. I'd get as much fun as I could. I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell that's you what. what life is, right? Yeah. There's not many times where you see on the internet where a con makes news like mm -hmm. we're like hey oh my god this con is like mm -hmm. people are and the last one she went to where they did a craft reunion that was a big deal online sure. people were going so crazy cool. that they yeah. were all together again yeah, yeah that that was really cool and the nicest thing about monster mania to dave hagan's and his sons and the the organization of everything to their credit is they've always adapted to what horror fans will want like your scream fans now 10 years ago it probably wouldn't have made as much sense mm -hmm. to do a scream reunion however i believe 10 years ago if i'm not mistaken maybe a little longer was when he did have wes craven there because wes craven had to promote red eye mm -hmm. which was getting a theatrical release but it was like he hadn't done anything in a while. But so it's nice that Dave could kind of follow up and get things and and kind of lay things out and and pick up on certain things when people are yeah. available. Like you know, I think it's wonderful that Nev had had the run she had on House of Cards. She was great on that. She's she's you know and, super attractive and, and like yeah. and and quite honestly. All those people are wonderful at conventions. Uh, Matthew Lillard has come up to my table multiple times doing those shows because so he's just a down to earth dude. I wish he gets more work. He, he, oh, well, yeah. here's here's the thing: he's a down to earth dude. He, he takes a break from his table. He takes a few minutes with everybody. Yeah, but uh, he walks around. He meets each and every vendor. Oh, so that's cool. after like the first time I had met him, I think a few months later I ran into him and he had remembered the conversation we had. Oh wow, that's awesome! But I was like, at the second time I talked to him, I was like, Matthew, what are you doing now? Like, yeah. are you just doing? Are you acting? He said, Well, I'm a teacher. He's Whoa, a teacher. He's a dad. Cool. He has kids. He's not afraid to admit the fact that you know, like, you know, things dried up and I had to figure out a plan. Yeah, you know, and and that happens in life. You know, I'll tell you what. 
I dare you to tell me a, a movie that Matthew Lear was in that you didn't enjoy. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah. It's really, you can't. Yeah. And like, without a paddle, he was fantastic. Oh, that, and that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. That he was, I was really glad good. that he kind of left it at that. Yeah. Like, that yeah. was such a nice bookend to a, a good career. He, he, did, he did Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Yes. yes. He, ended up, he was so good at Shaggy, they actually did him to do cartoons of Shaggy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, over the actual voice. Like, the voice actor was like, he's fucking fantastic. Yeah. Um... Scream was amazing. So um, um, my, one of my favorite horror movies. One of our favorite. Thirteen Ghosts. Sure. Thirteen Ghosts is sure. so good. It is. That's a great movie. That's another one that's primed for a convention yeah. run of, oh, uh, yeah. of people. People like to see that. But uh, that's what I like about conventions is that's that such they, an underrated movie. They'll keep yeah. the. It is. It is. Um, and who knows what Tony Shalhoub is doing? To probably drag him out of the woodwork to do a <laughs> yeah, convention. Yeah, yeah. You know, he can't be a very much monk. Well, I'm sure he has monk money left yeah. and wings money. You remember Wings? Do yeah. you guys you remember David Wings? David Spade and, uh, and wasn't um, Joe Rogan also on Wings? Wasn't he? I don't, I don't know if I they. Them. I don't think they were on it. Well, no, what was that's it? that's uh, uh, that's the other airport show. New radio, is that News Radio? News Radio. News yeah, Radio. Yeah, 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 they yeah. were on. Yeah, actually, Joe Rogan was on News Radio. Yeah, and I think. David Spade was on Just Shoot Me or something yeah. like that. Yeah, um, I have them all mixed yeah. up. No, it's understandable. It was all like a schmear, like a paint schmear <laughs> of that like like 90s sitcom that was kind of good, but yeah. Who was who was the ones you were excited for to meet? Mm. Um, Danny Trejo oh. yeah. and Bill Mosley yeah. and Skeet Ulrich is going to be there. Yeah. So, so bummed Ulrich. about it. Yeah. yeah. Her goal is to get. She wants to get movie posters, like yeah. the actual yeah. legit posters. I got posters. a few of them yeah. last time, and then she wants to like get those signed yeah. by people. I was oh, super nice. bummed because I I was going to get them, and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna wait because she sucks she might. at spending money. She mm-hmm. just she's too I frugal. I'm so mm-hmm. bad, yeah. But I was like, I'm gonna wait because Nev Campbell might have like a scream one at her table, and sure. I could just get her sign it. And she didn't. So then I was like. Oh. So, I, so she I has. Always, too late, so. She's a gorgeous yeah. green poster. Okay, There's just yeah. no Nev Campbell on it. I forgot too. You're right about Danielle Harris. She was really cool. Like they were all really cool, but she was just like super cool. And we saw her just walking around, yeah. like by herself, no security. Yeah. She was just and she got a around, picture with Daniel chilling. in the in the clown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. The night. We did like a group one. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It was so cool. You know what the the nice thing is about conventions um, from an artist standpoint that I've found. Um, People are always looking for something unique to get signed, mm-hmm. and you can always find that in the dealer room. There are always people that have unique posters of a limited run, like I'll, I and a few other artists do silkscreen posters for some of these. So you can always find something like that. Dude, and your, your poster that you did with The Exorcist with Linda Blair's autograph would be yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to get it eventually if I catch her in a good mood. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know where the stairs are for that? I never knew this. What do you mean? Like the stairs, the like the priest stairs. jumps down and kills himself on. No. Well, tries to kill himself. Spo- spoiler alert, part three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I think in, I only ever saw the first one. They're in D.C. Oh, they're okay. in Washington D.C. Yeah, it's cool. I didn't know that. Me either. Let me double check this because I don't want to be wrong. Oh yeah, I'm like bad with things like that or like producer names. I'm really horrible at it. Relax. <laughs> yep, Georgetown neighborhood of Washington D.C. Oh, that's that's cool. so cool. We could definitely do that. We go yeah. to D.C. like once a year. I was in, I was in D.C. last Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I love D.C. I, I went to go see a concert. Oh. Who'd you go see? Just, I went to see Ohm. Okay. Ohm is like a, a drone stoner rock band. Um, it's one of the guys from the band Sleep. I don't know if you've ever mm. listened to Sleep, another stoner band, but they're they're a great band. Um, it was at the Black Cat, which is a neat club. A neat small club down in DC. But you know, you know who I'm obsessed with that I need to see live. Who's that? And I got her. I got Courtney obsessed with it. And now every time you post a video, she's always tagging me in it and sharing it. That Mark Ribolt or <laughs> R- oh, Ribelt or whatever okay. his name is, the guy yeah. who just makes the beat on the Ripple. fly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, "You got a great booty hole." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see get him in live. The pool. Yeah, oh my get god. up in the pool right now. Oh my god. Get in the motherfucking pool. <laughs> <laughs> I. Yeah. You ever see his videos where he's just like no. in a he's in a brewery. And it's just all these people sitting there enjoying their meals, and he's just doing his thing, and people are just trying not to die laugh. Really? And he's doing like this. Like Maybe these. I have seen it. He's she so, probably sent me it. He's so fucking funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> who who would be your – because you said you do these cons a lot. You've seen a lot of people. And I know you said like you kind of got away from standing in line and yeah. meeting people, but – as a horror fan, you probably have your 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 holy grail. Like, who are some people that you're like, okay, listen, if they're there, I'll stand in line for it. Well, 
I'll just say this. The last person that I waited for, I believe it was when Corey Feldman first started oh. doing shows, and it was like his first one. And it was when uh, Corey Haim was still alive, God rest his soul. Um, and Corey Feldman, at the very least, was still in the throes of his drug addiction, which he'll never admit to. But as a fan and just somebody that's been around him, yeah, I mean, the guy's got issues. Yeah. So I think I waited in line like five or six hours. Wow. Yeah, because he kept taking cigarette breaks and shit uh. like that. And his wife was with them and they wanted to go eat. And it's like, listen, man. So that kind of sullied me on things, but if there was if there was somebody, it would probably be uh, I would say Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Yeah, and I know for a fact that, that cool. like people have talked to Kurt Russell about doing shows, and it was about ten years ago when he was first approached, and he laughed at the person and hung up on him. Really? Well, the last time the person talked to Kurt Russell, he didn't laugh because he found out how much money there is to be made at one yeah. of these. Yeah. And it's no small joke when you have taxes to pay every year, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Five hours. Like, I... I didn't, it didn't. I thought the lines were going to be a lot longer. Sorry, yeah, but so they little. they really weren't. Like it wasn't that bad. Yeah, this was at a different time though. Yeah. Like this was probably ten years ago, twelve years ago, when things were a lot less organized mm. than they are now. Yeah, they were actually super um, organized. I was impressed. The whole there's been like an evolution to how these um, people have always approached organizing these events. Um, biannually, at least with uh, Monster Mania, they're always improving on things. Mm. Even you know, with, when we went to SteelCon, that's yeah. a small like where the autograph room is is very small. Yes, and yeah. everything's on top of each other, but sure. you still kind of knew where the lines were and where you can walk sure. around. Well, that the the pavilion at Monster Mania, the the white pavilion that they have mm. off the hotel, it's perfectly marked. Like I I don't I don't get there all weekend. Usually. Um, around two o'clock on Sunday, I try to make a trip over there because I have friends that are agents and so just say hello to them. How was your weekend? Things like that. But it's amazing when you walk in that room. There's white lines all over mm -hmm. the green carpet. You know where to stand. Yep. When you if if you are walking in there on a Saturday, there's tons of staff that will tell you where to go. Mm -hmm. or, so yeah, you have to wait in line for that stuff. But it's a little bit easier than it used to be. Yeah, you know? it really wasn't that bad though. The only one complaint I would have is when we got in line for Daniel Harris, it, it wasn't against a wall. So our pictures were like right at the doorway and there was yeah. people like photobombing There was some picture. scumbags like trying to like, that photo. Annoyed, like they were standing yeah. behind her photos like yeah. pur purposely fucking kind of them up. That was yeah. the only thing that bothered me was she didn't really have space to be like up against a wall where everyone else was kind of, there was well, a wall. Yeah. Daniel Harris is good yeah. and she's big, but that was craft weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was the other thing. So like, she I expected... pro didn't probably get the same. S yeah. S s yeah. Her line was real short, but yeah. like there, I, th I expected there to be like way more security. Cause that was like my first mm -hmm. big time, except for the steel con one. And there really wasn't yeah. like, I, you know, it's funny. It's that like to what you were saying with how she was walking by herself and that I remember a time when, um, us horror fans, because I've been going to these since like 2004, I think was my Monster Mania 2 was my first one. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. So, and that was at the hotel. That was the first time they had it at the Crown Plaza. I don't know. I think it was a Marriott at the time. But uh, me and my friend Kelly and PJ, shout out to the two of them. Uh, they we went down and we just went down for the night and we snuck in by accident because we didn't even I mean they didn't have people at the doors checking yeah. wristbands and like we showed up at like seven o'clock on a Friday it was over at ten Whoa. so we had no idea what we were doing yeah, yeah. but uh, it's interesting to see the evolution of things yeah. over the years you know certainly. now that being in Jersey have you ever came across like Brian Quinn or Kevin Smith walking around it. Probably not Kevin Smith because he lives not in Kevin L.A. Smith, but Brian no. Quinn and Ming and I all the and Walt Quinn's Ming Ming yes Walt I've I've bought that Walt dude like I I don't I haven't really seen that show Comic Book Men very much it was a fantastic so, like, show I know that dude from just like being around and I don't know him but well, I've Brian seen him Quinn enough. from Impractical Jokers is in their yeah. friend group as well okay I heard he's yeah. been there before okay he said he's huge in the cons and he yeah. walks around just with general people. And it could be. I don't watch Impractical Jokers either. Yeah. That guy has been at shows that I've been at because I remember people making a big deal and I was like, well, I wouldn't know who he was. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like him, Walt, Kevin, Brian, yeah. all went to school together. Okay. Yeah. He didn't see yeah, that, that else. Walt guy, I was up at the Secret Stash like a few years ago. I've never been there. I want to go so bad. And, uh, 
my buddy, like, we walked out, and he's like, he's like, I can't believe you said that to Walt. And I was like, who? <laughs> and he's like, Walt, from the show. And I was like. What did you say to him? I was like, I, they have a Buddy Christ statue in the back of the store. And as you get to the back of the store, it kind of gets a little narrow because they have T-shirt racks. And he's standing there talking to somebody. And I said, excuse me, could you move? I need to get by. And he, like, I noticed, like, as I'm walking by, he kind of, like, kept looking at me. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to take a picture of the statue. <laughs> he looks like Alan Moore. Yeah. Like, you ever see Alan yeah. Moore? Well, he was like, in Clerks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, Walt was in Clerks. Like, I know I know, I know, know him from those movies. I like, think Walt's I knew, the guy who buys the cigarettes. But my buddy, like, freaked out outside. So. He's like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Walt actually, Walt and Brian actually did two Batman comics together. Oh, That's cool. right. The uh, they're, And they're the, the Wiling Jare or whatever. That's cool. And Kat- Catatomic or something yeah. like that. I won't buy them. The only place I'll buy those two comics is at that place because they were like I don't even care if they get signed by them. Yeah. But I want to buy them at the Secret Stash. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's wonderful there. Um I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. So same, same here. Well yeah. Kevin Smith inspired me to the point where I was like I'm, I'm not I don't ever want to make film but I always like podcasting I like how he's genuine and then H- Howard Stern is a big influence on me the same with Joe Rogan and Kevin Smith's like when I wanted to do it and I didn't have money I sold all my shit like all my collectibles so I yeah. had like a huge collectible collection and I and she was like don't do it and I was like I'm selling all of it yep. and all I sold everything and that's pretty much what you're seeing now like, yeah man I've done it yeah. I've, I've had to do it at various points in my yeah. tenure as an artiste. Yeah. Got to pay the bills. Now, how much of it, how much of your art do you do with a pen and paper and how much do you do digital? It depends. I mean, it, it's funny because it depends what the job calls for and how quickly I want to get it done. Best example to what we were talking about is that Exorcist poster that I did that you would see if you went to my Instagram or website or web store. I originally plotted that to do that as like a digital basically illustration where I would have used a Wacom tablet and drawn it out on a screen. But I knew I wasn't going to be able to capture the stippling the same way as if I used a a pen by hand. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I was like, okay, I have a limited window of about three nights to get this done. I can do it. So it depends a lot on that, a lot on the budget. Digital is quicker Mm -hmm. because then I don't have to go through the process of scanning it and separating the artwork or if it were multicolor or even if it's singular color to separate things and lay it out. So I I prefer traditional, I would say. Yeah. 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 But is is there a movie? Is there a movie? If you do anything for 10, 15 years, you have stacks of freaking paper laying around (laughs) that nobody buys or you don't want to sell and then nobody wants. So. Is there is there a movie of a print that you want to do that you haven't tackled yet? Absolutely. What is your what is your movie? Big Trouble in Little China, The Never Ending Story, Princess Bride. Oh, nice. What, one of those. What would you do for Princess three. Bride? Uh, I would probably. I I have a concept in mind, but does I does it involve Andre the Giant? Of course. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it, it, it would incorporate all of the characters, but there's a lot of things I want to do. Like, I want to do a labyrinth print that's representative of the property as I would want. Like, that's the cool that, thing. That's coming out again. What do you mean? They're making another labyrinth. Are they remaking it, or are they it's making, be like a like, continuation. expanding the universe? It's going to be like a continuation. Well, I could deal with that. I could deal with that. As long as we're not recasting David Bowie. David, and, da- da- you know, da- from what I heard, they respectfully say David, the, the, he's no longer, like, he's passed on. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Like, and just have another goblin whatever, goblin mm-hmm. queen. You yeah. know, let's let's get Lady Gaga to be a goblin. The- oh, that's a great yeah. choice. That's a great Heck choice. yeah. She's fantastic. Yeah, yeah she is. She's nice. She should be, <laughs> she should be in a horror movie. She should. She, she should. She, that first scene of American Horror Story yeah. where they have the, the she, foursome. I no wait I did not see that season oh, of American Horror good. Story first season her first first episode, first episode that's all I that's seen good. that's yeah. all I needed she dude. her and this dude are they go out and they find this couple at a drive in and or like a drive in yeah. movie and they're just looking at each other like like giving each other the eyes and they go back to the hotel and they're having a foursome and they're they swap and she's, she's on top and yeah. she literally like it looked like porn and it was on yeah. AFX what like her freak. ass is showing and then <laughs> she <laughs> she pulls out this claw and then she just jams at the dude's neck yeah. and starts sucking the blood and it was oh. then like they're covered in blood and then they're kissing is like dude it was such a cool scene I was yeah. like 
You saw I, Lady Gaga? I can't believe it was on TV. Yeah. I'm a fan of Lady Gaga. I will yeah. say that. She's she fantastic. is quite the artist, man. Yeah. And the thing that sold me on Lady Gaga was when she did SNL the first time. Mm -hmm. I think it was the second song that she did. They brought out a grand piano and she did a burlesque song and it was freaking gorgeous. Yeah. She and sold me when she, so when she put Alfred Hitchcock lyrics in her songs. Oh, really? She she was, I want your cycle, your vertical stick. Uh, <laughs> you and my, you and your window when my baby is sick. I want your love, right? Oh, something like baby. that. Like that. Oh, yeah, man. like Rosemary's Baby. Ever, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. She used all Alfred Hitchcock. I was like, that's She's so that's, talented. That's another movie that uh, I want to do something for very soon. Is Rosemary's Baby? Mm. Um, also, The Fog. I'd love to do The Fog. I was that's, a huge fan of The Mist. The mist is great because mm -hmm. there's no happy great. ending. Spoiler no. alert! Yeah, no. <laughs> you haven't seen it. I, I, haven't, I know there's a series, but I haven't seen a series yeah. the yet. I, I don't know if Amazon did it or put it out just recently, yeah. but I did see that it's I there. Like I but I just haven't got it. it. Speaking of monsters and creatures, did you see um, a quiet place? Ooh, no, part two is coming. Soon, oh I think. Yeah. my god, it is it good. fucking awesome? Yeah. Like, so these creatures based on sound. So if you make any noise, That's right. they attack. Well, that, there was the one that came out prior to that with uh, Sandra Bullock that was on that oh, red uh, bird, bird, box. bird box. Yeah, that's not it bad was either. Similar. I think it I like, after. It was really oh, it was good, after? too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. They were but, both really good. But it was I like really them. good, yeah. Yeah. Like, we are in such, and you can appreciate this, is we, Heidi, is we are in such a period of, um, art renaissance and horror like everybody we're, we're also in the period of mass communication so everybody can complain about how terrible things are so it yeah. kind of people horror movies get a bad rap they, they do, do. They really they're do. easy to rag on because everybody thinks they're an authority on them yeah, yeah. I mean because that everybody... wasn't scary here's when I watch a horror movie the way I go into it is if I was in that situation would I be scared yes yeah. and if the answer is yes then I'm not gonna shit on it. Mm -hmm. There is one, what was that movie you were watching yesterday? I was fucking terrible though. It was on Shutter. Oh, uh, it tried to do like 15 plot turns in three in 13 now. minutes. I can't remember they, now. Yeah, they were just trying to twist and turn I too much. I didn't think it was terrible. See, it takes a lot for me to hate. Movie, Me too, like, and this one was I, bad. I didn't think it was that bad. I've you know, seen I was, worse. I, I, I've seen worse. I woke up to halfway through, and I'm watching it, and I was like, "They literally tried to plot to us four times here." What was happening? Because I, I watched I watched a bunch of movies. I don't remember which one you're. She watches about. so many. Have you guys seen Hell House on there yet? Hell House LLC. No. no. Do you know no. Do you know anything about it? No, I've seen. I feel like I've seen like. I've seen it. I so just haven't watched it. They made, I think, they they released the third one in the fall, but they film it in Lee Heighton. Oh, really? Yeah, That's it's cool. filmed at the Waldorf Hotel that they have mm -hmm. the haunting of the Waldorf at that they've had for years. It's supposedly one of the, the scariest haunts in Pennsylvania, and they filmed it there. And, I mean, I'm a sucker for anything like that. Anything that involves Pennsylvania uh, and horror, yeah. I'm a, I'll automatically like it. Yeah. But it's pretty cool because I've been up in that section of Lehigh many times with, with the drive-in and prior to that. And, like, uh, you could just drive by there, and it's, like, our own little version of Hollywood. Would I would there. love cool. I would love the, my goal for the podcast and I'm a, I'm a person if you put it in the universe yeah. it can happen I want to do a podcast in a haunted location Ooh. I want to set a table up and I want like the owner of the building to give me the history of why this place is haunted and just sit in a room and that would be great it'd be so and much I, fun I'm a skeptic but I will be a silent skeptic and I would love to just be there yeah that would be awesome how cool would it be if we there? just we had a table okay. in a dark room Okay, so let's just did a podcast. Let's take a turn for a second of the conversation because um, <laughs> this is a topic that I love that interests me is local ghost lore. Yes. Okay. So in high school, I had a friend, Desi, um, who had these uncles that live out in Branchdale. You familiar with Branchdale? I do. I'm not. Okay. Branchdale is out beyond Minersville on your way out toward uh, Tremont, Pine Grove, out that way. Okay. It's a little Patch town, 
and there is a house out there called the pink house and the pink house is exactly what it sounds like it's a pink house and her uncles had this house and they swore that it was haunted they lived next door to it in another little house and one night desi decided hey you know we're all like 16 we can go stay overnight maybe get some booze hang out so all of us went and camped in the haunted house what it resulted in being was it wasn't haunted her uncles were got drunk and came in <laughs> to the house that it must it looked like somebody had hoarded stuff for 40 years in the house they were walking through the pitch black beneath us like on i guess the first floor knocking stuff over and eventually i think one of them fell through the floor or something <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even think we stayed that the night. But that's like just one of the fun um, local, you know, um, local folklore. But have you ever heard of the ghost of the Gordon Mountain? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I actually have a story about this. Okay, please. So I, I went in high school. I would do anything I could to get out of doing work. Okay. Right. Anything. And <laughs> I was like, I'm not right. They're like, all right. So you have to do folklore. And I was like, okay, can it be local? And the teacher's like, ooh, I like your ideas, Tony. I have great ideas. So, uh, you know, so she's like, okay, this is good. And I was like, but, and this is before ghost hunting was on TV. You know what I mean? So I was like, what if we get, and I just volunteered my buddy John, his mom's <laughs> video camera, which I don't, I don't want to know why they had a video camera. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, what if we take John's mom's video camera and we go up in the woods and we document our experience and tell you if it's haunted or not? And the teacher was like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, do that. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> so the teacher was sending us a die. We were bad kids. It would have been, yeah. a, win it been a win win for them anyway. Like, they're going to get cool stuff or they're going to die. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, I, and I had a, an interesting experience. I can't really explain it. Like, I, I, I felt like I was being watched the whole time. I felt like I was not alone. And then, like, I got violently ill. Now I'm also a skeptic, but I also have a, maybe a little belief. I'm 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 on the fence. Yeah. Um. We we get this content. We go back and show it at school, and it went over a lot of people's heads. We're like, oh, okay, we'll give you an A because you went and did it, but it was full, it was cool. And a lot of people thought we faked a lot of it. So we take the tape to a friend, like a, my my a friend of a friend knew somebody, and they took the tapes to him. They're like, you guys didn't alter this, and they're like, no, and they're like, you guys got shit on this tape that people don't get like that ghost hunter has been trying to do for years don't capture really and he was like yeah and she's like i need you the guy was like i need you to get all your friends and come meet me at this other location so we go and it's like it was like poltergeist there was a little old lady there and she's like get out yeah like she was like <laughs> i'm a psychic medium and she was like looking at us and this chick looked right in my eyes and he goes you're you have the ability to be a medium and you have these connections and you have all that i'm like i don't want it and she's I like don't you don't have a choice like this is what you're you're and she goes you got really sick that night and i was like yeah she was that's because something was trying to channel through you uh, right? i got the willies right now yeah, and uh, i was like i was like oh i don't see, like that's the stuff like i i like being skeptical toward things until like i get the willies about that yeah. Like, ah! yeah so then the guy was like can you guys do another you want you want to do another location or high school kids were like fuck yeah where are we going he goes we're going to send you to Jim Thorpe. Um, all you have to do is help the guy winterize the building, and you guys can do the entire building yourselves for the entire night. And I'm like, where in Jim Thorpe? And they're like, the prison. We got the entire prison to ourselves for the whole night. Ooh. Really, really weird shit happened. Really? Yeah. Like, really strange stuff. And then they're like, wow, you got really good content again. Well, you guys might have something here. We're gonna send you to another location, and we're still once again high school kids. We're 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 doing the whole trick. We're like, I'm sleeping over your house, you're sleeping over right. my house, and then we <laughs> drive to Jim Thorpe and stay overnight. Um, he's like, I'm gonna get you to a place in Philly, and we're like, well, where in Philly can you get us into? And he goes, I can get you in. This doesn't happen to anyone for free. You're gonna go to Easter State Penitentiary, and all my friends research and they're like, we're not going, and yeah. that was the end of it. Yeah, yeah, that was probably wise. Yeah. <laughs> That was probably very yeah. nice. So you um, brought something home. There, I'm like, sorry, I've good. I remembered what movie you're talking about, and now I'm trying to think of what it's called, and I can't. It was this this group of people sign up for this. Um, oh, not the, really like a escape movie. room. Yeah. yeah, no, they sign like, up for a horror movie experience. Uh, yeah, and they go out in the woods, and it's it's supposed to be all fake, like a like, and then yeah. you go out in the woods, and you have to solve all these puzzles to find out like. 
and it's like supposed to be like a fake horror movie experience. I think I did yeah. see that. I can't think of what it's called now, though. Yeah, and, and then the girl's like a recovering heroin addict, and it's it's twisty. It's like you think yeah, it's gonna be one thing, I think and then see that. they try too many twists. And it has an edgy name and a cool logo. I, I can't yeah. think neon. of what it is. Yeah, I hated I it. Just, yeah, I hated so it. So I I need to say this like I broadly, I mean, Shutter is a great thing. I as a, as a horror if fan, you're a horror fan it's cheap too it's like yeah, like, it's like five seven bucks. bucks it's it's, yeah. it's wonderful yeah it, and I like it I'm, I but I am disappointed at this point um, in the selection that I'm repeatedly getting I think it's great that they gave Joe Bob the platform they did but if you have Amazon Prime and you go under their horror there's a lot more like 70s and 80s classic slashers and stuff that so there's got to be we do Amazon Prime again there's yeah. got to be there's got to be a, a license for that and why yeah. aren't they picking yeah. up on these licenses you know they're they're like a subdivision or something of A and E I think mm -hmm. right? yeah I think so, so. like they've got to be able to like hook into that catalog yeah. somehow like there's got to be a lot of B and, rate you know, too but I'm, which is cool what's like, that? there's sorry. a lot of B rate movies yep. and like hidden gems yes like, it's have cool. you ever heard of the movie The Scrapbook no. So this is all right. So this is like <laughs> every horror fan. I always ask this question. So when when Netflix first started, and they had their streaming service, we we just started dating, and she'd come over and spend the night, and we would Netflix and chill before Ooh, it was a thing. Um, but we <laughs> the first night we we're like, all right, let's let's watch horror. She's like, I love horror movies. I said, all right. So. We go to the horror movie section, and they're like all one star yeah, movies. Like <laughs> they are the worst of the worst for, movies. We like, the worst ones. We would purposely look for the worst yeah. remainder and watch them. Yeah. And there was this one called the Scrapbook, and we watched it, and I was like, "This is a snuff film." Yeah, we literally ended it, and we're like, what "We the we were watching this? it. We're like, like is this we fucking watch? real? Like, it looks super real. Like, it, it looked was, too real. Like it was scary. Like I was Ugh. like." So, I was freaked out, and I usually don't get freaked out. I was like, this looks super real. Like, I think somebody actually died. Like, oh, yeah. Geez. So the premise of the movie, here's how it starts. First person view of a little kid. He's walking with a teddy bear. He sneaks around a corner, and the doors are cracked a little bit, and he peeks through the door, and it's a girl getting naked. And she's, like, dancing and touching herself, and then... Oh, like, brush her hair, like, and getting ready her for hair, bed or whatever. And like. then she looks and says, come here, and pulls the kid in the room, and then proceeds to give him oral sex, which is supposed to be a young child. Yeah. Then another teenager busts in the room and is like, what the fuck's wrong with you? That's our sister. And grabs the kid, drags him into the room. It's all first person, so you don't see it, but you're yeah. seeing, you, you know what's right. going on. And he begins to be raped by his older brother. What the? F so fucking. And weird. then it says, then it says 15 years <laughs> later, yeah. and it's this dude throwing a girl into a van and driving off. So he, like, kidnaps these women and holds them, like, hostage and basically, oh. like, forces them to, like, keep a scrapbook of them and, like... And he's uh, he's he's torturing them. Yeah. He's, she, he's like, raping them. Sick. And he's making them watch all of his previous victims, yeah. reading the same scrapbook that yeah. they he made them write journals in, and then they have to write their own journals. Yeah. So, like, the first thing he does to this girl is shaves her head bald. Then he puts her in a blue tote. Ugh. Fills like it those with, big barrels? Yeah. Those, fills it with milk and, and lemon. And then hammers the lid shut yeah. and lets her sit in the hot sun for like two days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so sick. Like, but it looks so real. And then, and then, like, um, gr spoil it. Like, listen, if, if graphic continues, we can't even find hit, this movie hit, now. We like, can't. We really? Yeah. yeah. Was, like, literally, like the next week, it was gone. I have, a, I have a friend that could find this. Yeah. 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 If you're sensitive Try to it, stuff, you might want to hit the thirty second button yeah. or hit the scrap. But the next, the next thing he does is he ends like her plot was. Maybe if I act like yeah. I enjoy it. I feel like that's probably what they all did. Like, I feel like anybody in that situation would be like, maybe if I just pretend to like him, I can get right. my way so out of he, here. She, he starts, like, raping her, and she's like, oh, thank you. Like, and she then, starts getting into it, and, like, and then pretending. he's like, no. And then he, like, throws her on the floor and takes, like, a Boone's Farm like 40 like, bottle, bottle, like, wine bottle, ah! and rapes her with it. And like you see, like the picture, like ugh. she's like on all fours, and you just see like blood pouring out. It looked too real. It looked way too it was real. Super cringy. Like yo, I can't. we watched it, and like we we finished, and I was like, yo, I'm not. Oh, go I can't, home. I can't do this. <laughs> like, oh there was no there was I, no chill on that night. I I need to sleep with my teddy bear. Yeah, and yeah. Suck my thumb tonight. Like it looked so real for being like jacks. a B rate movie. And then we watched. So real. And then we watched Dead Girl. Remember that one. That's the one where the kids are partying in the old asylum and I they find a zombie asleep. Asian girl. They yeah. find a zombie Asian girl strapped to a gurney and in the basement. Keep like raping her. I, yeah, I do and, remember. And they that. have sex parties with the zombie yeah. and then yeah. she breaks out. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I think I fell asleep for that one. Fido was on there. Remember Fido? Oh, yeah. I remember Fido. Very good movie. Yeah. yeah. I just watched uh, Slumber Party Massacre the other day for nice. the first time. Nice, yeah. So corny, but so good. Yeah. You know what movie I've never seen, and I'm a, I, and I always tell horror fans, and they're like, you're a scumbag for never seeing I've never seen the Monster Party or whatever, where it's like all the classic, like, Dracula, Werewolf, I don't think I've ever seen I don't that either. The, the claymation thing? No. Is it claymation? It might be. Kevin ha- Kevin and Nikolai always talk about Have it. Have you Mon- seen Hush? Hush is fantastic. On Netflix? No, I I'm haven't. I'm like obsessed. I keep telling everybody. It's, it's good. so good. Well, it's Katie Seagal, the yeah, girl from yeah. um, La- um, House on Haunted Hill. House on- or okay. Haunting on Hill She's House. She's so I was attractive. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's so yeah, good. Yeah, I know her. She yeah, plays. Yeah. <laughs> she was at Monster Rainy last year, I think. Yeah, in August. Cause She's my, so my buddy, pretty. So my buddy Dominic, yeah. like, this is how weird this whole life is with things, like, with conventions and stuff. 2000, 2004, I find out about Monster Mania because me and my Let's friends. Go check the camera quick. Are, I, I hear you. Yeah, me and my friends are at a pizza shop on South Street, find a flyer for Monster Mania. Go on the website, or we go to it. I go on the website afterward, I discover a message board. I befriend people on this message board. I meet these people in person. I become friends with these people. One of these people is now her her agent my friend dominic that oh runs God. full empire so cool. productions and he's like he's a dude just like us that worked a full-time job started representing people he started representing richard band was his first guest richard band. uh it's charles band's brother he um uh, from full moon productions okay. charles band uh puppet master yeah yeah yes so his brother that does music con- um music composition dom started representing him um 10 years later he is now at the end of this month going to dallas to represent john stamos bob saget <laughs> and dave coulier <laughs> for fun. the first ever full house reunion oh wow. this is dominic Dominic Mancini. Who's who's the the not the not obviously not Mary Kate and Ashley the Jody the, Sweetnam the nexus the nexus Sweet- are up. How rude! Yeah, the nexus are Stephanie. up. Jody Sweet Stephanie. Is it Sweetnam? Yeah. Sweetnam. I was a Stephanie fan. Yeah, let me tell you, the years yeah. were kind to her, my friend. Yeah, she looked good. She's got big boobs. Yeah, she does. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Katie Seagal is. Yes. A ch- yeah. We were and watching. I that. liked House on Haunted Hill a lot. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. And the whole time you're watching, you're like she is so fucking yeah. pretty. She's so pretty. Yeah. But Hush was really. She, good. Yeah, so in the Hush, she plays it's a such deaf a girl. Different okay, and mute. And she, like she, she, she yeah, she's yeah. deaf and mute, and she lives out in the middle of nowhere, and she's a writer, okay. like a crazy person. Like what deaf mute person would live in the middle of nowhere? But and uh. and she, <laughs> these guys just kind of stumble There's across one her. Guy. This it's, one guy kind of stumbles across her, and he's like. All right, I can take over this house and and rob her so and kill her. Fucking good. And the whole time she's like, she can't defend herself because yeah. she can't hear her like, and she. But can't she's go- also a writer, so like she'll be like thinking of doing something and like in her head, like she'll be like talking in her head, like going through it, and it'll it'll like narrate and be like, okay, you could go out there, but he's gonna get you, and then you're gonna die. Like right. it was done it, so it, like, good. Talks it through. It's just such a really it good was movie. So good. What was the one we seen in the drive-in that was a fantastic movie? And I don't even consider it a horror movie, but it was such a good movie. Um, the dinner party one, where the, the where the girl gets invited by her boyfriend to the dinner party, and then the whole dinner party is trying to kill her. Ready or no, not ready. Oh, oh, you're no, uh, you're, you're next. next. Oh yeah, we didn't see it in that drive Fantastic, yeah, yeah. It was it was the Dust Till Dawn thing? It was on there. No, it wasn't. Uh, yes, that it was. was. All like classic movies. It was one. Du- ready or not was on there the one year. Not ready or not. Ready or not was good. Your next, your next, your next, next is was on there the one year. Your next was really good. That yeah. was a good twist. It's a great movie. I saw that a few yeah. years ago. Haunt yeah. was really good. I've been telling everyone about Haunt, this. One I haven't too. seen that yet. It's so good. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. that yet. I like it's the cover for good. it though. It's good. I just haven't got around to it yet. Yeah, Nicola's like, I hope they come out with masks, like because they have like creepy masks. Oh, they definitely will. It's so yeah. good. I love. I'm a sucker too for like jump scares. I think because other I stuff doesn't scare me. I hate jump scares. Like I don't really get scared by gore or like uh-huh. people getting killed. Like it doesn't really scare me. So like when things jump out, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, you got me. Like I don't she, know. She loves walking on haunted like I Halloween time first. the haunted attractions. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, I'm going first and leave me alone. I'm doing this. I, I, always, I always have to like hold somebody because I don't want to be alone. Uh, but like, I like to get because if you're in the back, then it's ruined. Have you ever gone to a full contact haunt? No, no they I don't scare want me. I'm afraid. Of I don't that. want that in my life at all. So like, I didn't realize that was a thing until a few years ago. There's one in North Jersey and Parsippany. That creepy guy, right? No, he's he's kind of creepy. There's a guy who does it and like, I, I don't. He, I think it might. 
I don't. I don't. The one we went he to might be Virginia. The one we went to the one year was not full contact, but they definitely touched you. The guy that smacked you in the face. Yeah, the dude hit me. <laughs> he hit me with a severed head, and it was like it was a prop. Like he was. Like, they were supposed to be like Alice in Wonderland, and they were mm-hmm. the they were the twins. And he jumps on the hayride, and he has a severed head, and he and he like goes kiss it, and he shoves it in my face and grinds it. But it was sharp as fuck. I was like, dude, you just cut me. Like I was like, it was kind of cold too. So like, I was like, yo, that fucking hurt. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is if you go on there, you could put glow sticks on, and the glow sticks is like, oh yeah, they won't touch you. They won't touch you, but they, they fuck with do. you hard. Like if yeah. they get on the ride, they're you like, never do glow that. stick. They just yeah. go right. Yeah. Like you never do that. And when you're waiting in line, don't act scared, or they're gonna come for you every time. Yeah, every time. Yeah, they always. What, come for what you. hayride was that? That was fantastic. It was like a hayride and a walkthrough. It was. I won tickets for it. It was. Reaper's was, Revenge? Was it Reaper's Revenge? I don't okay. think. I, all I know is they had like, so they actually do legit horror movie cool. ones. So this is right when Loomis died. So the one part of the scene is, it was done so well. Like I forget, I, I, I rec- it was my favorite one we've done so far. So you, you, they're it going down It was a drive, the, but it was good. Yeah, it was a long drive. But you went to the thing and then all of a sudden a TV pops up and it's Loomis giving his speech about Michael. Yeah. And it was, Ooh. and then you're watching And you're like it. going through like the hayride and there's like, um projections of like the movie clips there there was a couple different ones yeah so they're doing the cool. like it was so you're supposed to be scared but the whole time we're watching we're like we're like oh <laughs> <laughs> Loomis is gone. Oh and then as you're talking, I don't know how they did it, but the guy who's playing Michael does the fucking closet scene, but in the woods. Like, he just yeah. steps forward, and as he steps forward, he just light, his mask illuminates. Ooh. And, I, and he doesn't come at the thing. He just like he just pops up. So it's like a tribute to Michael Myers. That's the one they kidnapped me and stuck me in the freezer. Yeah, so I was like, that was cool. And then you're going through again, and then you go through yeah. a boiler room, and a guy comes as Freddy. Then... Oh my god, this one to this day, I was like, this girl's a fucking maniac. Oh yeah. You drive up, and then you come up to this uh, woods, and there's everything, and you look down the woods, and all of a sudden it's a well. There's, yeah. And then Ooh. the hand comes up. Yeah. Then really? the other hand comes oh, up. Oh, she was and, sick. And it's all she, backlit. Yeah, and she comes up, and as soon as she, like, she, you don't see her because of the hair, and she just goes... And she pops she her like shoulder out, all, yeah. like double joint, and you can hear because it was like you cold hear too. It, you can hear, you hear her joints popping, popping out of it. Yeah. Then she gets on the hayride, oh, right? So, so it was a huge cart. So like the length of this table is where like. If like I the had middle. My, like the middle. And if, I had, if I'm if i sitting and my feet are extended, my feet would come to here. And if you're on the other side, your feet. So this whole yeah. thing's open. And she just got on the hayride and then just did the, the crawl. <laughs> but when she did it, you heard her hips, legs, and shoulders Everything pop out of socket. Popping. And you hear it. It's not like gunshots. And <laughs> she just starts so walking down the... Like it had to have hurt, especially because it was chilly. Like, it could not Maybe have felt good. Contortionist. She was she 100%. Had to have been, yeah, yeah. 100% yeah. a contortionist. Sick. And it was... It made the feel so much creepier. Yeah. It was it totally so... Did. I think that got me more than anything. I was like, oh. My yeah. God. And then, so then half of it's a hayride. Uh-huh. Then the other half, they're like, okay, now you walk through this. There was like okay, three different cool. parts because there was like another part that we had to walk through, I think, too. Yeah. And then they separated me from the first group. Okay. Like, so I was with this group and I, I made a joke. <laughs> and the girl, the girl was really pretty. And she was in the room and she's like staring at me. I was like, you have really pretty eyes. <laughs> and she's like, that's it. And she puts me in a cage. And then she's staring at me. I was that like, "That was after me." I didn't even meet back up right? with you guys. Yeah, yet. so she she gets pulled aside again. <laughs> so she's completely by herself. So then she gets stuck in a freezer, and then I'm Jeez. in a cage. They left me in there for like 20 minutes. I was like, yeah. "Can I get out now?" Like, yeah. And they grabbed her and threw her in there. And then I'm in a cage, and then I'm, she's just staring at me. I was like, "It's not changing the fact that you have really pretty <laughs> eyes, right?" And she's just like, she's trying not to laugh because it's only me and her. This time, yeah. I'm not ruining anyone else's experience. And then all of a sudden, I hear Heidi like, "Yeah." And they're they scaring get, her. Scr- I can't help but scream. Like right. I think it's so hilarious. They put her in a cage next it. to me. They put me in a cage next to me. I was like, "Oh, that's my wife." And they're like, "Oh, you know each other?" And then they took him and left me there yeah. again. I was like, "That's my wife." And she goes, "You know each other?" And I was like, "That's my wife." I was like, "Yo, she has really pretty eyes." And then she's. They're like, "You leave. We're keeping her." I was yeah. like, "My like, Heidi." I was like secluded. The oh whole no! Time. So then I had to do the whole leg next, like the end leg yeah. alone. Yeah, oh, I was Jesus. by myself for like the whole thing, and then she had to do almost like a quarter of the whole thing alone. The whole uh, thing, and we were sitting much. out like I made my way through, <laughs> and I just walked through, and they were just like ah, and I was like, all right, I'm not like it doesn't. Do I nothing can't to help me. it. My right? reaction, like when so, people jump out at me, I just like ah. The scream. one part, it's all tarps, and I'm just like, <laughs> and I kept just running into gates, and, and this one guy's supposed to scare me, and I was like, all right, cool, I like your makeup. How the fuck do I get out of I here? And he just I goes, like, "How do I get out?" Like, yeah. <laughs> he just nods. Man. He like pointed like to the door. I was like, "How do I get the fuck out of here?" Right. Like, so I can't find. We're it. waiting outside for like ten minutes, <laughs> and we're like, 
where the fuck is Heidi? But it's funny Murdered. because when we were waiting in line for this, there was a fam- like a Hispanic family and they were legit freaked the fuck oh, out. Yeah, they They're were like, so scared. We've been waiting for our family member for like a half hour. <laughs> And where they think we're lost and they think they're in the ride. And the people are like, oh, no, they'll be out eventually. They got, so, like, lost. Yeah, so we got so murdered. We were waiting for Heidi for, like, 10, 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden you hear, the, like, the very end, like, right when you get to the end, to push you out quicker. Yeah. These four guys come out with chainsaws and they attack oh, your Oh, sure, legs. yeah. So all you hear is, wing! And I hear Heidi go, ah! And then she comes busting out the door, and then she busts out, and then she looks around and doesn't see anyone she knows, and then she sees the whole line of people just staring at her, and she goes... That's great. That's great. I was looking on my phone while you were saying that. The place I was thinking in Parsippany is Brighton Asylum, and I I just wanted to say that name, because they do themed haunts all year round. Okay. Um, And I went to one a few years ago that it was a My Bloody Valentine haunt. But this is one where they touch you and stuff. There are... So how they do it is they have a schedule online, a calendar, um, and different days are highlighted, different colors so twice a month they do a full contact haunt i would never do that i don't no, like people touch- i don't like yeah. people touching me yeah so we went to the regular one and it was a blast yeah. it was i mean it was like in an old abandoned factory so spooky um it, well, my buddy it was like a fantastic movie it was like an hour long to walk through wow yeah it was i was amazed too it was scary at, at times mm-hmm. but it was fun yeah, I like that. so I would tell you to check that out. McKamey yeah. Manor is the one that I was talking about. Okay, it's um, that's one we did last, right? No, the, we didn't do this one. This is the full contact guy who like straight oh, up like yeah, that's like beats it's like, people. Like you have to sign a waiver, and they pretty much like they like waterboard you. Like, yeah, and they, fuck, and they I'm sorry, super that's okay. You can curse, like, and they spit on like they'll put fake blood in their mouth um, and then spit it on you. Pledge of fraternity at that point. Yeah. Christ, it's it's bad. <laughs> I thought it was closer to us, but it. I would never I do that. No, it's way too much. Like they like tape you up and like spit in your face and like. Like they'll tape your mouth shut and then dunk your yeah, head on the water. I wouldn't be able to do that. I would freak what out. The f- yeah, that doesn't sound like no. Like he like something straight they up gags people for, and like, like kills. His neighbors them. have like, been trying to shut it down for a long. Yeah. It, it's kink shit. Is what it's it comes definitely to. a kink. Yeah. Well, yeah. and like he watches it. Like they, we watched like a whole documentary on it. And, like he watches it. And he's like he like loves. Like, this guy's people a getting local tortured. guy. Not around here. I can't okay. find. I from Virginia like, or something. Virginia or something. But I can't really find it. Beautiful but it was state. Just so crazy people. Sick. <laughs> yeah. The, like it's just too much for me. What's the one we did last year with the at the at the hotel? That was really good. The makeup they had was fantastic. It was not. It wasn't expensive either. Sailorsburg, something in Sailorsburg. That was really good. Shocktoberfest good. is a good time. I love that. That's really fun. Reaper's Revenge was good. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- hey, when they come at me and they got bugs, <laughs> get to me every time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I love that kind of shit. Yeah. If you want to go with us one year, love it. Yeah, yeah I haven't been Hotel to a haunt in years yeah. because um, usually that's when I'll do like a few events in October. I wish they did them Like all September, around. October's are usually packed. So yeah, yeah. Is there any? Is there any movies or horror things coming out? that you've been looking at that you're excited for? Uh, Not that I could think of off the top of my head. I was a big fan of the It movies. I was anticipating them coming out and everything. What did you think of part two? I liked it. I liked it a lot. Like, a lot of people, I think, you know, when they found out there was going to be a second part, like, I know somebody that wanted it to be, like, a giant, you know, orgy compared to the book or something. I don't know. I guess they had sex in the book or whatever. They wanted a kid orgy. But I no, I, I not even that. But just to like I guess mention it. But um, yeah, it was just they did a blood oath instead. There are certain things that that can make it on screen and can. not I, right. I was pretty happy with how they represented everything. The 1990 it miniseries will always be number one to me because I grew up with it. So part one, fantastic with the kids. Mm-hmm. Part two with the adults. Yeah, wah, not a fan. Wah. No, okay, horrible. The new- I, what are you talking about? The old 1998 oh, okay. one. I, I always, Tim Curry is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I always watch that whenever I'm home, like, sick. I always put on the It miniseries. Yeah? Yeah. You know which one I like, too? I don't know if it was, like, a made-to-TV one. Remember they redid The Shining, but it was made through yes. TV? Yes, yes. That was really good. Yep. I thought that was first. I thought the TV one came out first. No, The no. Shine, the Jack Nicholson one no. was way first. Oh, so Stephen okay. King had more control over the ABC one. Yeah. I think that's why they did it. That girl in the tub was must, way scarier. He must have had... he some licensing deal with ABC for all the stuff that they've done with his writing over the years. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that's the one is it's Steven 
Weber, Stephen Weber is also in it. To bring it back to what I had said before, who was also the star of the NBC sitcom uh, Wings, starring Tony <laughs> Shalhoub. Yes. So uh, I heard Doctor Sleep was good. Yeah. Doctor Sleep was good. I didn't. What's see the What's yeah. the other with Stephen King that was really popular? It was like a four part series. It's like a four hour movie. If you watch it, that Rose Water. Rose Red. Oh, Rose Red. I'd never seen it. Rose Red it's was good. So long. It's it was good. good, but it's super long. It is yeah. super long. Yeah. And it could. And you know what? It might be better if they condensed it down to just a long movie. Mm -hmm. I because it's a good story. It's, it's just long. it's very very yeah. long. Yeah. yeah. You know what? They just they have on Shutter um, Creep Show. Like they yeah. read the like show. They made a show. Yeah, what do you guys think of that? I started watching it. It's well, creep, good. the original Creep Show that was a um, that was George Romero and yes. Stephen King working together, right? Correct. Yeah. That's Sweeney awesome. Yeah, and Nick was yeah, on Yeah, it was it. like a dream yeah. team. Yep, absolutely. It's All those like Pittsburgh guys. Like, I'm a huge Romero fan. Like, he's my favorite yeah. horror director, and I've been very fortunate to spend time out in Allegheny County in Pittsburgh enough to get like a history of things, to visit various locations, to meet many people that are involved go, with things. I want to go to the cemetery. It's great. It's it's beautiful because that's Evan right outside City. of Monroe. Like, that's like yeah. outside of Monroeville, right? Absolutely. Well, it no, it's actually about forty minutes north of Monroeville because I stopped there a year ago on my way back from Cleveland, and it was awesome. I I stopped there. I had a picnic. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The house is no longer there, though, right? No, the house. I don't believe the house is anywhere near the cemetery, but. Um, the cemetery is in Evansville, and there's a lot of other stuff around that. But the cemetery is something you want to visit because the mausoleum is still there. Um, and then, I mean, it's great for a weekend to go out there. And you can go to Falling Water. We, we the, went the to Evansville is closer to Falling Water. Um, yeah. The if you would want to do that as well. We went to Pittsburgh for the weekend to see Steel Panther. Oh, okay. And I was like, yo. We're, super we're Eddie's excited. buddies. We're in, yeah. We're I love Steel. When they said Crowbot Steel Panther, I had like a mini oh wet God, dream. Yeah, yeah. Totally did. yeah. I didn't get to see the show though. Oh man, <laughs> St stuff happened. Molly Crew is pissed off at them. That was the same weekend. So yeah. I fuck. All right, <laughs> Ben. I'm sorry. I'm rehashing your nightmare. But um, I, Crowbot goes on. They fucking kill it. I had the whole crowd chanting Crowbot. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Steel Panther comes on and they do like their first song or two, like the first song, and then they do like they start talking to the crowd. And I go, Rest in peace, Vince Neal. And he goes, You shut your fucking mouth or I'll fuck your girlfriend. And I go, <sighs> I go, D -d -d You wouldn't dare or something like that. So we start heckling each other. And then he starts going to the whole Vince Neal thing. And then uh, next thing I know, my friend gets black and drunk and falls to the ground and we, we get kicked out. And we get kicked out. Uh, I was in the Poughkeepsie, New York show, so we drove oof. pretty far to get there. Yeah, Where did. was that at in Poughkeepsie? The Chance? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. <sighs> so like a, two, like a two hour drive. The Chance is such. Oh, Chance is the. Oh, sketchy. Totally is it still in a sketchy neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's funny because let sketchy. me tell you this gentrification has not hit that place yet. <laughs> that place has been sketchy since 2001. Yeah. I used to work for Roadrunner Records and we used to go up there and do marketing and stuff for them when I lived in Wilkes Bear. And I drove to that venue quite a few times. There used to be a fried chicken place, like a block down. Um, There's not much around. Not very right. good. <laughs> Highlights of my time in Poughkeepsie at the Chance. One time I locked my keys in the car and the fire department <laughs> called, <laughs> called 911. Three fire trucks came out. The fire department had to break my window to get oh. my keys. They, yeah. did, they couldn't just... Do Idiots. Idiots. Oh, God. Yeah. Idiots. So Ben gets kicked out and the bouncer's like, I go, listen, man. Go. I drove here. I drove really far to get here. My buddies are the opening band. Like, I, I'm, I'm a huge fucking Steel Panther fan. He goes, listen, man, I'll cut your break. Your friend's just going to sit here anyway. Ah, go back wait. inside. <laughs> and I go, awesome. Now, I'm, I've never gotten close to a stage oh, for a concert so in my life. I was touching the stage for yeah, Steel Panther. It was awesome. I love Steel Panther. Yeah. Good, so I, I lost my spot. So yeah. I, I go back in the space and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to hang out at the merch table with Crowbot and just watch the show from there. Yeah. Bouncer comes in. He goes... <laughs> Like three, five minutes later. It was so quick. I go yeah. back outside. He goes, your friend decided to take a stroll. He's gone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> he's blackout drunk. And In now he's Poughkeepsie. walking around Poughkeepsie, New York. Mm. And all the bouncer says to me, he goes, your friend is up the street to the left. There's an ambulance. That's all he told me. I turn the corner and I see someone getting put into an ambulance with boots on. 
and my friend was wearing boots. And I was like, my heart dropped, and then I see him stumble behind a car. And I was, like, and I was like, now get the ambulance ready, because I'm going to fuck him up. And I grab like, why couldn't you just fucking sit there? And then we drag him back, and the bouncer's like, listen, ma'am. You got to go. Go. I said, he goes, I'm not letting him back in, and I can't keep letting you back in. You're going to get me in trouble. I said, can I go yeah, back in? Yeah, because they weren't get, supposed to let people back I in. I said, can I go back in and just get my, my wife and my cousin? So we, I seen one Steel Panther song and had to leave. Uh, yeah, damn. my dream set list. That was her. Um, but yeah, the Steel <laughs> Con. So we, we. Uh, this is a way callback. We go to the Steel Con, and this is like my first con, her first con. Yeah. Um, the girl from Chasing Amy, he, was Joey Lauren Adams. Jo- yes, yeah, uh, Burt Ward, Julie Newmar, um, Adam West, Tom Savini, China, Ralph Macchio. Yeah. I so met, I met him. Walk up to Tom Savini's table. No one's there. No one. It was so, yeah. It was there was like one dead. guy there. And yeah. I guess because nobody was in line, Tom literally was just like, he told the handler to go take a break and let the guy sit in the handler's seat. <laughs> and they were just having a conversation. Yeah. It was so chill. And then I was just, I kind of stood there and I was just like, I didn't want to like pay to meet him, but I just wanted to kind of see his stand because he had the cock gun there. Sure. Yeah. And then I was like, can I just so buy a poster? Movie. And he's like, well, yeah, buy a poster and I'll sign it. And he was just super chill. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So I go who his stacks of posters and it's all the movies. So it was like, what do you pick? Yeah. yeah. Do you pick like Dust Till Dawn? Do you pick Friday the 13th? And I, I'm staring at the Friday the 13th and I'm like, it's got to be in here. Yeah. And I keep flipping. I keep flipping. Dawn of the Dead. Yes. Yeah. There it is. Nice. He's got a, a la- documentary on, on Shudder. It was the it was last a documentary one. documentary by him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did the he did Bray Wyatt's mask. Yet, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yep. He did the Fiend's mask. Actually. He just, and he just did all the masks for Slipknot, yes. too. Yeah. Savini is, uh, he gets a bad rap in the convention world because he could be standoffish at times because he's, I mean, he's been an artist since the seventies. Like he's been through a lot of shit. He's made a lot of shit. He deserves the credit to be able to, you know, be able to, I I don't want to say he gets to blow people off every now and then, but you know, people have, you realize that people aren't always on. Yeah. Like like you think you need to be, Yeah, you know, he's human. So a a few years ago I was doing a show out in Chicago and I was friends with the promoter and I got a really good table, like where all the celebrities were like in with the celebrities, like, um, what was his, what's his name from night of the living dead? John, John Amplis from night of the living dead was there. Um, and, uh, which one was he, was he the black dude or the, uh, the, no, or I the got, white the, the husband I gotta look it up because I'm, I think John was one of the oh, why, why you're looking it up um, yes. so Savini like I said Savini has this a normal guy sitting at it, behind his table with him and he goes hey man uh, these guys are at the table do you guys mind do you mind just heading out and I was like no 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 man if you guys are having a conversation I don't want to ruin what you got sure. going on because this guy like I like Savini but this guy looked like he was having like a fucking fanboy moment sitting at the table with Savini and I was like no man can you just sign my poster thank you so much for your work you, you, you're you literally the best special effects artist of all time I got to hold the cock gun and I was like I'm just gonna leave you alone and I just left and, but he was literally yeah. the, he was gonna boot that guy and then he was like come up come behind the table like yeah. take a picture and we I don't even think we took a picture with him we just got the autographed and left. I thought we did take okay. a picture, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I just get weird. I, like I don't. No, I understand. Yeah. So I was like, "All right, see you, man." I and then we, did, but I we don't walked. Know. I walked. Now, once again, no. The only per- people in this entire place that have a line is Adam West and uh, Chasing Amy Girl. Mm-hmm. So I walked through her line, and China is no one sitting at China's table, or even attempting to go there. And I was like, "Hey." Like, thank you so much for being part of my childhood. Pro wrestling has been a thing. Like, you're well, hands down the greatest female wrestler of all time. You know, like DX was a, I was a huge Shawn Michaels fan. Mm-hmm. And before she even had a chance to answer me, Amazing. her handler was like, if you're not paying money, get lost. Sounds and I was like, like and I was like, fuck you then. And I was like, because your line's so huge. I was like, I don't want an autograph. Yeah, I don't want a picture. I just want to tell her I appreciate her work. And then Which she, I understand. But and then she couldn't. Time. She was like, she was, She didn't even answer. And then yeah. the handler shooed me away. Yeah. And I was like, and she's like, she was like, well, no one's at Ralph Macchio's table. Nobody. He was literally standing by himself, <laughs> just yeah. doing nothing. He was checking his fantasy football or baseball, ba- baseball. or something. <laughs> so I was like, fine. You know what? Let's go pay for Ralph Macchio. And I said it right in front of China's table. I was like, because I would have paid for you if you just weren't a fucking, if her handler wasn't an yeah. asshole. Yeah, she should have corrected him. Yeah. yeah. So she was having a bad weekend that it was weekend. A girl. Really? It, was a, it was a girl with China. I, 
I had a friend that was there that was working, and she was not having the greatest weekend. So maybe there was that, some. Well, a couple yeah, weekends after that is when she passed away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, man, she's. And it, I, I was a huge fan yeah, of her. Me too. Like, I me like too. China. Um, um, unfortunate. It's, it's it's awesome that she finally got in the Hall of Fame with DX, but she should definitely be in there solo. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Like a dream match is her and Ron. Like imagine if she was around and her and Ron to squared off. Oh my goodness, that would be great. Yeah, China was fantastic. It would be great. Um, so we walk over to Ralph Macchio. And uh, as soon as we walk up, he's like, "Oh, sorry." And he's like, "Let me just change my lineup real quick." And he's and I, he's and he finishes There's and he's literally like, "Literally no one there." And he's like, uh, "Let me guess, um, Karate Kid fans." And I was like, yeah. "No." Got me. I go, "No." And he goes, "What?" I said, "Beer League, man." Okay, and he well, goes, "I like Karate Kid." He goes, "You're a hard, you're a Howard Stern fan, aren't you? Fucking weirdo." <laughs> <laughs> and he was super cool. Like yeah. we just sat and talked to Ralph Macchio for like, yeah. Cool. And nobody was at his table. Like we were just, we could have stayed there all day if he, if he wouldn't have cared. Yeah, yeah. So some like some stuff like that was cool. I think it was like sixty yeah. bucks. And then he's like, listen, I know. and he had no handler. Yeah. He was yeah. just by himself. He's like, I don't need a handler. Like, I know karate. <laughs> I um, just uh, just to touch on what I was going to say with Savini. So one weekend I was, I'm, I'm set up across at, from him at this convention in, in Chicago. And Savini, you know, to himself, he's like a world-renowned artist to some respect, at least in the special effects community. He's the best special effects of all time. And Tom has an ego, a little bit of an ego at these. He's a guest, you know, he's a celebrity, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. So I would, I, I love the guy. I've loved the guy since I'm a kid. I love his work. I love Dawn of the Dead. I love all the Friday Thirteenth movies. So. I was like, I found myself like looking at him out of the corner of my eye all weekend, seeing maybe, maybe Mr. Savini's checking my workout. That amazing goatee. And then like Saturday afternoon, I did catch him like looking at me, but then his handler came back and brought him a big honking sandwich. (laughs) And what does he do? But it's a big sandwich. It's like, you know, like it's almost the size of a Nerf football, this sandwich. He takes a buck knife out of his belt and cuts it. Cuts the knife on his table. Now his handler, she's a sweetheart. I've met her. I've known her a few years. Like she's like she, you're not. She's a nice. Here. She's a nice girl. And I, I saw him cutting a sandwich with this buck knife. I took my camera out right away. I started snapping pictures of him. She in the pictures, you could see her looking at me, laughing as I'm taking pictures of him. So I, I eventually went over and I showed them the pictures. He did laugh at it. Yeah, he did have a sense of humor about it. Okay. Yeah, you know. And uh, I again, I saw him in. September when I vented a show in Indianapolis and he was there and he was gracious. It's just, you know, he is a known name in the horror sci-fi industry and he has to deal with guys that are like, oh my God, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's, you know? that's what I, I, I'm i so afraid of. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I just get awkward. Like, I'm just a socially awkward person. I, so would like, stand, I don't know what to do or I what to I would stand say. in line just to say, thank you, shake your hand and walk away. Well, sure. As long as you like don't try, like if, if, but they're like, well, you stood in line, you're not going to pay anything. Like, no, I just wanted to say thank you. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to constitute a dollar amount. Mm-hmm. I just I get just weird thank you and for I your don't work. know what to say. Yeah, I'm just like, hi. Because right. what, what am I going to do with your autograph? Yeah. I'm not going to, A, I'm sure. not going to try to resell it. Mm-hmm. Even if you, you pass away, I'm not going to be like, oh, cool, you want this person's autograph? I'm going to make money off their name. No, yeah. That doesn't do anything it. for me. Like, and. I mean, it's cool to say I have something autographed, yeah. but that's pretty much the extent of it. Like your 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 signature doesn't really do much like for me. I just like, like the fact that I met you well, and you yeah. did great work. Yeah, the yeah. memory of it is yeah. what I like. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Also, when I went to see Nev Campbell, I was like, I really want her to write what's your favorite scary movie. But I was like, but I don't want to be weird and be like, can you write this? So I was like waiting, and like I saw her write it, and I was like, yes. Oh, she actually wrote it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, cool. yeah, I was like super stoked. I was like, that's I hope awesome. she writes it. I still it. think Basic Instinct's her best movie, but. It's not basic instinct. Right, it's well, wild things. Wild things, yeah. yeah. That pool, that pool that scene. That pool scene. Oh hey, boy. Hey, hey, hey oh, now. Yeah. You yeah, see Kevin. You see Kevin Bacon's dick in that movie. You do. You see a little slight, little side glance of it. I met Kevin Bacon down in Phoenixville. Yeah. Yeah. Bacon Brothers were doing a concert at the Colonial. <laughs> it was right after I first started doing posters for them, and me and two of my friends waited out back and met him. And Kevin Bacon is a teeny tiny little guy. Yeah. Just look. He's a little guy. He doesn't look that big. Speaking of Kevin Bacon. I um, just watched Tremors a couple his, weeks ago. His, his movie <laughs> Hollow Man so was awesome. Oh, Did yeah. Did you see the Invisible Man trailer? No, The trailer, yes. That looks good. It's awesome. My only I'm complaint. I'm so happy for Lee Wan L. My only complaint? They give it away. Showed too much in the trailer. Yep, they give it away. 
Okay. They should have left it in the trailer where is she crazy? Yeah. And, yes. and add that only. I agree. They yeah. shouldn't have showed the breath. They would have marketed it. They would have. Yeah. You're yeah. right. They should have showed the, the whole movie should have been is she crazy or mm-hmm. is he really there? Yeah. And in the trailer when you show him sitting in the seat and the whole time you're like, like. And they end like they show like she jumps paint like they should have. just And left less it in go. the movie they swerve us and it's not real and she's been crazy the whole time. I was thinking that too the other day because I kept seeing like the trailers and I was like, what if it's all fake and like yeah. she's really just bad shit crazy? Yeah. What was that movie too we seen where the person went to the insane asylum and they thought the entire time they weren't insane? Not Ooh. Shutter Island. It was a girl. I know what you're talking about. I can't think of what it's called though. That was a while ago. I that saw was a good movie too. Um, oh, but I, I was looking before because you were talking about new movies coming out. I'm kind of excited for Candyman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Jason Jordan I, Peele. I have not watched the trailer for it yet. I didn't see it either. No. I saw one. Trailer. What about what about the one? It was the bootleg version of the one they tried to market with the girl from, um, the movie you show you like, um, Pretty Liars, where she does the autopsy of the guy, the girl from The Exorcist. Oh. Oh, autopsy of, of Jane Doe or whatever. No, yeah. but that one's really good that, too. So the boot, not the bootleg one, but the one that came out first, the, the autopsy of Jane Doe, I've been trying where to she's movie. like she was part of like a cult, mm-hmm. and yeah. that one was on Netflix. That was a fucking cool that one was ass real movie. Good. Okay. Is that that's the one with Emil Hirsch, right? Yes, that one was awesome. Mm-hmm. I've I was been like, trying oh, to get a, this. Movie. Is this the bootleg version of the one in theaters now? And I was like, if it is, this one is dope. Yeah. <laughs> it's Possession of Hannah Grace. Yeah, okay. She's I don't like, think I saw she, that. I, I don't know what exactly it is. I think she she's a cop out of rehab, and then she works in the morgue. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. Yeah, I've we, been meaning to like rent it or find it or something. I before just before our other dog passed away, we used to have a Saint Bernard named Cujo. Oh, and he was a monster. Oh my Such goodness. a good boy, though. But that, that's just the, yeah. the extent of our horror movie. Yeah, that's like awesome. if you go up to the bathroom like right now, our shower curtain is it's the scene of cycle. Silhouette of oh, nice. and on the door, it's the it's the vacancy do- thing. Yeah. And if you flip it over, you flip it over. It, the one side's bloody and the other side's not. Sweet. When we remodel our bathroom, we want it to look like a hotel bathroom. Yeah. And then we want to get the floor mat that when you step on it and your feet are wet, it's oh, bloody footprints and stuff. That is kind of cool. Yeah. 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 My shower liner only has soap scum. Well, we have that too. We definitely have that as well. This is the outside one. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's, we, it's just, I just found that like some random website called uncommongoods.com. I, I've seen those. They're cool. Yeah. Like, they just have like real cool, like weird things. There, I, I've always wanted to get, um, I know there are websites that allow you print artwork on, on shower curtains. I've Ooh, always wanted cool. to get like shower curtains done up of something. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Well, I do that Teespring and supposedly it, they're going to add more products to it later in the year. Okay. But you ha- the only way you can get them now is if you are a big time seller, then okay. they'll let you have more stuff. But like oh, okay. the stuff that they, like the, premium stuff like you get ba- the trucker hats baseball hats enamel pins pins mm-hmm. and i was like man they I have wish- enamel pins yeah they- get out yeah and then they do like shower curtains and one piece bathing suits <laughs> and how the heck does that even work duffel bags and book like what if somebody just orders one do they produce just one and create the dye for just one enamel pin i think so Probably. that's insane that's yeah crazy because you can just go on there and order one t-shirt and they'll print well, it and send it to you yeah well with the process of things, like you can do, you can buy printers now, direct to garment printers, that it's like a $30,000 printer that it, it will print a full color shirt and it's like a plastic ink that it heat cures, uh, the machine prints and heat cures. So mm-hmm. you could do that. See, it's not cost effective, but with the process of doing enamel pins, it's not really conducive to just producing one. Yeah. Yeah. It's too, it's too intensive to create to create the mold and and to just produce one yeah it's just interesting that's i'm interested i'd have to look into that and yeah see, teespring and see how they go about that because uh, one day you're always go. you're always looking to cut corners and try to to lower your overhead as an artist or a small business you know mm-hmm. yeah i like when i get enamel pins produced i have three factories that i deal with in china and the only time that I can deal with them is 4 to 5 a.m. in the morning because that's their peak time where they're yeah. around email. Yeah. So when I was producing pins a few years ago, that's when I would have to talk to them. Or like I did a Critters pin with uh, flashing from the movie Critters with uh, flashing eyes. So that one had a battery pack on it we had produced in Mexico. So that was different. Like you had to oh, talk nice. to them at a different time. And then you could only talk to them for like an hour. And then you couldn't get a, rest, get a hold of them for 10 or 12 hours. If you and- make any more of those Critter things, let me know. 
I'll have to see because I worked with a company out they of were Texas, so cool. uh, Paul Bear Press, my buddy Craig, and it was a real it was a real task to get those produced, and they were real bulky, so we would have to find a way to streamline the bulk of them. Yeah. You know? Didn't you watch a like a Critters remake or something like that not too long ago? Oh where yeah, they, they just they, they shuttered. The, were they shutter, in the school? Yeah, Shutter did a. Uh, they had the white critter. Yeah, you. I, I, I was watching it with you. Shutter did it last year. Yeah, like the, it was a white critter, critter yeah, they, that was a good one. Yep. Yeah. They did. They did a limited series last. And year. they turn it. They turn it into a giant ball, and they're I rolling mean, down the street eating everybody. It's not like when Shutter does <laughs> does those, like the the critters one, and then the the creep show. Like they're not the best. Like I what, thought it was cool. What do you want? Like uh, like a lot of people flame the critters one online. Yeah. That's why I'm saying Ugh, this. I hate. Well, I hate reading reviews. Yeah. Like, I just people just get so. But like you ruined it, my childhood. Even like the yeah. creep show, it wanted to. Be, it was to me. It was true to the vision that came before it. Mm -hmm. uh, did it live up to it? No. But those right. were those were excellent movies. Yeah. Yeah. You had a They're, you had a dream team. Yeah. yeah. So like I like sorry. Remakes, what, what was actually, that? What like was that I, one we watched? And it was super strange, but I really really liked it. Oh, no, There's two know. versions. There was two movies that I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw out here. The first one was the ABCs of Death. Oh yeah, yeah. and VHS. And VHS. Oh yeah. VHS. Yeah. yeah, they're both they good. Were sick. Well, they were just you ever a see holiday. You didn't see holidays. But holidays was on Netflix, and it was like yep. horror things for I every holiday. That. Mm -hmm. It was. It was insane. Yeah. Another yeah. thing that's cool too is I was watching them and some of them like had me really, really high suspense and it ends with a jump scare, but they're really good. Um the Crypt TV. Oh, I don't think I've seen oh, them. They're, I haven't seen they're on Facebook. They're okay. like literally like three minute videos. Okay. And they tell like this creepy fucking story. Crazy. And the first one was like the girl was like in bed and her hallway light would turn off. And then turn back on, and there was okay. a shadow, and then it would turn back off and turn back on, no. and she's like, and the shadow kept getting get closer me. and closer and mm -hmm. closer, and then she freaks out and just pulls the blanket overhead and turns to the side, and then her bedroom light starts flickering. I did no. see that, and then yeah. she turns and is like this really creepy yeah. ass face, and like the the looksy man came mm -hmm. from Crypt TV. Have you seen um, Hulu has a a lot of hard oh, yeah, hard yeah. shorts on it? Really, and a lot you, of originals too. Yeah, and, and if yes, a lot of horror stuff. They are a great resource for They're new good, horror. Yeah, yeah mm. a lot of like, so they put like something like, must have been like 50 shorts up in the last year, horror shorts, and mm. they're maybe five minutes each. Oh, but they're great. Wow, yeah. They're like, it's it reminds me a lot of um, the, the VHS or ABC's yeah, of yeah. Death yeah. that they did, you know, where they had a lot of independent horror. I just like watching vignettes. ABC's, and the whole time you're watching like, it's A. What the fuck is it going to be? Yes, <laughs> and then so you're, and then weird. like you're like, oh, it's this, and it's not yeah. even close. Yeah. You know, I like the Shutter though because I I was watching it over the weekend, and like a lot of it's like B rate or like weird movies you've never heard of, mm -hmm. but like. The one I watched, it was called Mayhem. Yeah. And it's like, it's the girl from that Ready or Not movie that looks like Margot Robbie and Glenn from The Walking Dead. Nice. Oh, I did yeah, see that. I was like, Excellent. It was so good. Excellent. Yeah. And let me tell you, I was convinced. I was like, Margot Robbie can do no yeah. wrong. She's in this horror movie it's now. Because I'm, I'm a huge not her. Margot. No, it's not. But she, <laughs> she looks, looks like exactly her. Like, a lot yeah. like her. Yeah. Yeah. It was really good. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, well, it sounds a little cheesy, that's, but I'm going to watch. It was really good. Yeah. That, good. That's one of the actual, like, strong showings, like, yeah. Shutter original yeah. movies have had. I want to see Meg. I, I want to see Meg. Yet. I'm I super. super I want to see it. Yeah. Is that the Megalodon movie yeah. that yeah. came out? With, what's his name? The. Jason, well, not Jason Bourne, dude. Um, Jason Statham. 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 Yeah, but what was his? What was his action movie? Statham. What was his action movie? Oh, I know you're talking about. I can't he had like he, he was like the start of it, like the John Wick series. He had like three or four of them. The cleaner. Yeah, something like that. I, oh, yeah, I can't think of it. <laughs> um, I'm going to get you. There was. He's Italian. like he's older too. Yeah. Like I, I I remember when I heard how old he was, I was surprised. Find out what those movies are called. That's going to bother me now. No, not Crank. That's Crank. No, he plays like a secret agent. It's not the professional. He's so, in Fast and Furious now. The contact or uh, the contact or something. <laughs> I remember he fights a guy in a garage and then he spills oil all over the floor on purpose. He was in the Expendables. It's a mess to clean up. He was in Crank. Transporter. Transporter. <laughs> That's what it was. There we go. Yep. That, that was like uh, the movie that started them. something else And the Italian now. job. He was in the Italian yes. job. Yeah, I had Great something movies. else from Shudder now and I can't remember. Was he in uh, Snatch? Snatch. 
Yeah. He's also in Snatch. I'm a, I have a man crush on Mark Wahlberg. That's like, I love yeah. all his oh, movies. Oh, I just watched. So, funny story Spencer about. Spencer Confidential. I, I want to watch that. I saw the preview it's yesterday. Good. Funny story about Mark Wahlberg. He was the one that, yeah, he was in the, uh, the, the Phillies football movie. Yeah. What yeah. was it called? Invincible? Invincible? Yep. Invincible. Okay. So my um, my Aunt Jewel that lives in uh, Minersville that married my Uncle Len, my dad's brother, she grew up in South Philadelphia in Gray's Ferry section of South Philadelphia. Her brothers and sisters live down in that area still. Her sister Jerry and her husband Al opened a sub shop down in Gray's Ferry in South Philadelphia where they still own it. Al passed away, God, I think it's 15 years ago now, Al's gone. But so Jerry still runs a sub shop. They were shooting that movie. Well, Al had a lot of classic cars, I believe. And Jerry used to drive them every day after Al passed away to the sub shop. Well, I guess the crew from Invincible needed older cars. So and they were getting subs at Jerry's shop. So they rented her car off of her eventually. But it wasn't until Mark Wahlberg came in and asked her that she agreed. <laughs> oh, really? And then, like, she's, she's like, so, of course, so, so everything Jerry, you want. Jerry's, like, had, like, she's like, oh, yeah, he stops in every now and then, doll. <laughs> like, with her <laughs> South Philly act. She's great. She's wonderful. But it's just so funny. Evidently, Mark Wahlberg's, like, the coolest guy in the world. Yeah. You know? He he definitely took a turn because when he was younger, he was not a good person. No, I remember yeah. hearing that. What, what, Hoodlum. Did, he almost it, killed somebody. Did he do Joe Rogan in the last year or two where he talked about it was something I heard he did where well, he, the he, guy from the guy just passed away that he did the interview where he did like his tell all story he was on Inside the Actors Guild yeah yes James yep. Lipton yes and he, he pretty yes. much said that he was in a gang and they were they were stealing cars and he was a, he was he was just not a good kid and he robbed a liquor store and on the way out of the liquor store he had a bottle and he thought this Asian gentleman was stopping him from getting out and he was just, he was coming, like, it was just like a bad place, bad time. And he took the bottle and he hit the dude in the face with it and almost killed the guy. That's right. And I guess he was yelling, like, racial slurs at him, like, Asian racist yeah. slurs. And then, like, he was going to jail. And then his brother was New Kids in the Block. And he's yeah. like, he paid a lot of money and got him out of it. And he goes, listen, if I'm getting you out of this, you need to fucking change your life. And he did. And then he started doing the modeling. And then first Say movie. Say your mother for me. Yeah. Then his first movie was, a, was also a horror movie. Yeah. Fear. Fear. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, Let me in the house. Yeah. Just Let me in the house. Here's your fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> Is she Mark Wahlberg in me? <laughs> what was that from? What's she doing? What's she doing? She's doing the thing from Fear. You know what uh, I mean? From It's Always Sunny. Always yeah. Sunny, yeah. yeah. She's Mark Wahlberg in us. Mar She's Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Maureen Ponderosa. Oh, oh no, my God. Does, does, does he say he's Mark? I think he says. Yeah. No, I think he's. She's Marky Mark in us. Yeah, she's Marky Mark. <laughs> He's in a great movie, too. Uh, Rockstar. I love that yeah, movie. Yeah, the Rockstar. You know what's funny? Invincible and Rockstar are both movies I've only seen on commercial air flights. You know what's, you know what's awesome about Rockstar? So when he goes to the mansion mm -hmm. to try out for the band, there's a gentleman already in the booth trying out. It's Michael Starr from Steel Panther. Ooh. That's right. I did hear that. Yeah. I did hear that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's I, cool. I, useless movie, -a, movie that's trivia. That's all right. So there's two prints <laughs> that I, if you ever did them, I would, I, I, that would be fantastic. My two favorite movies that are not horror movies that are not the Warriors. Okay. Breakfast Club. Yes. And Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh. I'm going to go see that on Friday at the Majestic. At the, at the Majestic? Oh, they're showing it at the Majestic on Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I wish I didn't have plans. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that would be cool. Yeah, I would love to do a Ferris Bueller's Day Off print. Yeah. Uh, which, which, would you, like, just at the top of your head, which would you, what would your image be? Well, it would be hard pressed to not involve Cameron's father's car going out of the, the window. The, yeah. Going out of the window, <laughs> shattering the glass. Now, there's an illustrator from Chicago that did a, a poster of that. Oh, about 15 years ago, but I'm sure that I could make my mark on the same. <laughs> just like it's like, how we can get the miles off it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll drive it backwards. I, I <laughs> still question to this day. Can you do that? And then Cameron just, Cameron has his mental breakdown and he just starts laughing. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. There's actually for the breakfast club one, my, my friend, Chris uh, Garofalo, who's an artist uh, down toward Philadelphia. He did a solo show last year 
or the year before um, at a gallery in Chicago. And I remember he had 16 candles um, for a print to do. And I told him, and I, I was like, you got to do this idea. And he didn't do it. So I have a good concept in mind. For Breakfast Club? Yes. Oh, my God. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. That's That movie is probably my like my favorite movie of all time. Yeah? I, it's timeless. Like, because that, gen, like, you can take a kid right now. Like, yeah. you can take yeah. me in high school. You can. you can take you in high school. You can take a kid right now in high school. And that they're still going through those exact same things. It is strange how that is the case, isn't it? I feel like it? I didn't fit into any of those groups. <laughs> That's okay too. I was like, a lo- some people, some odd. people are a mix of each of those characters. Like for me, I was a little bit of Bender. I was a little bit of Andrew. I was a little bit of the basket case. I was never the princess, and I was a little bit of Brian. If you actually look at the table, the princess is here. So there was a, a beer company, um, Breaking Brewery Company, did the Breakfast Club cans. Mm-hmm. So this is this is the princess. You see a little bit of Molly Ringwald right there. Up there is, is the basket case. Mm-hmm. You see Allison. The yeah. the, ner- the jock is here. No, and that's then, Brian. Uh, Brian's over here. And then oh, somewhere over here is Bender and then Brian. Brian's over there. Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite movie. And I, they're like, well, we, we're not going to do the sixth beer. And I was like, what do you mean not going to do the sixth beer? Well, there's only, f- there, I mean, the, the fifth beer. And I was like, well, why not? And they're like, well, who are we going to do? And I was like, you make the bull. And they're like, what the hell is the bull? And I said, just do the principal doing that. Yeah. And you, you don't mess with the bull, young man. You get the horns. Yeah. Uh, and make it a super strong IPA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking amazing. Yeah. The, um, the bas- All right, so the princess was a strawberry banana muffin beer. Mm-hmm. The, the the brain was a IPA. Okay. The basket case was... The I mean the criminal was um, a strawberry a blue waffle beer, the jock was a peanut butter uh, strawberry peanut butter Stout. beer. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it was IPA, strawberry peanut butter IPA, and then the basket case, which was the best one because it yeah. went to the movie the best, was a a um, pixie sticks Captain, Captain Crunch. Crunch sandwich. Oof. Remember when she takes the the, the, yeah. the bologna yeah. off and then she yeah it was the best tasting beer at all of them. Jeez. It was a sour. It was fantastic. Oof. Yeah, I just I I have a friend um, that works uh, for Tired Hands, and a few friends that work in the brewing industry. Tired hands are here. It's just yeah yeah, very good. <laughs> and um, it's just it's amazing to me how the beer industry has really gone uh, to a flavored drink yeah. aspect of things, uh-huh. like where they have like. You know, sours lucky, and juices. Lucky Charms beer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. We were lucky. Like I remember, I turned twenty one. I was excited to drink a green beer, and I was like, "This isn't any different, except yeah, it makes my color. fucking mouth look weird, <laughs> and um, my pee's yeah. gonna look weird later." Yeah. yeah. Well, pee. <laughs> I wasn't looking at it. <laughs> so <laughs> every urinal in St. Patty's Day is just dyed green for oh, a week. God, they don't even they don't do that in Schuylkill County, do they? Green do, beer? Yeah. Some yeah. places. What, I who think does that? Maybe. Every bar. Do they? I think yeah. the famous was the oh, last place. I, the famous was the last place that I was at that did green beer. Crimson House would turn every drink green off for you the one year. Really? Yeah, I remember I was getting seven and sevens, and they were just that. That was a bad day. Oof. That was a bad day. Oof. That was what the boys. Does Pottsville do their uh, St. Patty's this weekend. Yeah, so I missed Oof. the parade last. No, I, I was there for the parade that year, and that was when the boys upstairs played the wheel in the morning, and then the Woody's at night. I don't remember much. It was a bad night. I was very intoxicated. I can't remember what I ate yesterday. That was my long hair phase. When I saw the long hair, and I and I had it and braided, braided like Post it Malone. Like <laughs> I had the two. Post Malone's I, in that Mark Wahlberg movie. I wish. Yeah. I did see that. That I did see that. I had my the friend, two braids. my friend Katie, uh, works for Think Geek, and I don't see her too. That's a great service. Like yeah. a great page. She was telling me that Post Malone calls them up. I didn't even know you could call Think Geek up to order shit. He calls them up to order like fifteen thousand dollars worth of shit at a time. I was like, what? What? Yeah. I was like, oh wait, I get it. He's like the Justin Timberlake of my nephew's generation. So <laughs> he's super. He's really good. He's he's good on guitar. Like here's the thing with him is he can literally do any genre of music. Like he wants to do a heavy metal band. Yeah, we'll see. I we'll didn't know he was he acting does. until I saw him in the movie. Yeah, you know? Donald Cerrone's in the movie too. Yeah, he beats Ronnie's. up Mark Wahlberg. I'll have to, Donald Cerrone's a god. I'll have to watch it. I def- definitely have to. Be it was real it good with a beard and hair. I was like, "Who's this guy?" And then I was like, "He looks familiar." <laughs> Donald was, Cerrone. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "It's Donald Cerrone." Did you ever hear his story on Joe Rogan where he went scuba diving and almost died? I forget. He's insane. Oh my god. He's like crazy. They were they junkie. were cave scuba diving and they took a guy down that wasn't very new to it, but they told him like, "Listen, man, like." You need to keep your shit together. You need to do this, this, and this, because if you fuck up 
and make a bad move, you're going to kill us all. Because, like, they have a line that they have to follow. And if you freak out and take the line and someone and, – and, and make – and so what pretty much what happened was they were in the – they were in this cave system and they were about a good way in. And this guy, I guess, just freaks out, gets claustrophobic or whatever this deal was, takes the line, freaks out, kicks up all this soot. And dips. Oh, oh! So what did they have to just like blindly guide themselves the way through? The rest Donald Cerrone was alone, oh, and God, he's telling the story. Out. He's like, yo, he goes, I, I, he goes, I tried, I stayed calm, I just tried to find my way through, and then I end up coming to this spot where I was able to like, fi- like, collect myself. And he was like, he's look, and he goes, he was in there for a long time, and he said he was staring at his oxygen tank, and he's like, I don't have much left, and he's like. It's completely sooted up. I can't see. He goes, if I ter- come out of this, if, he, if I come out of this channel, which I think where I'm at, I can either make a right or a left. And if I make the wrong choice here, That's because it, it's, yeah. I'm dead. If I don't make the right choice, I'm dead because I'm going to run out of oxygen. Well, and then he, you have to be, you have to be careful when you're going up. Yeah, he's that like, you don't get the bends as the you bends, ascend. Yeah. yeah, I learned that from that 47 meters down movie with yeah. the sharks. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, he literally was like in his, he was That's writing, so his, like, I guess they had like underwater notepads and stuff. He's like, I was writing a note to my family. He's like, I was dead. That's so sad. And he said he came out of the cave system shit. and he was finding his way through, finding his way through. And then all of a sudden he just seen a beacon of light and he just Dude. swam towards it and he went for it. And he, he came up and then the guy was like, they're all up on the boat like... Like out. pretty much could like you, they're pretty much in the boat. Could like, you imagine if they left? Like if they uh, thought he was dead wait, and could, like left. Let's, they, let's they, just talk about the scenario when he. Would, how would you even respond to somebody like that? That they perp. They, this guy re- overreacted and killed, conceivably yeah. killed you, and now you see this person. Yeah. yeah. And this guy's a trained maniac killer. Yeah. <laughs> talk about. Talk I would about, just jump in the water. Talk about having. <laughs> talk like, about, like, you know, <laughs> if, if that isn't a story about patience. It's insane, yeah. Okay, you had to have patience uh, to control your emotion to get through that cave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of patience did you need to have once you hit the surface and, and saw, saw that him. asshole? Yeah. yeah. I guess he pretty much was like, listen, like, that was. He pretty much was like, this was more or less our fault for taking this guy in there, not oh, knowing he wasn't man. prepared. I got to go back and listen to that. Yeah, it was wow. a jo- it's fucking fantastic. Wow. The whole time you're listening to it, you're like ready to cry and you're having an anxiety attack. Because the way he's that in the last year? In the water. Yeah. That he did if that? you just type in Donald Cerrone's scuba yeah. diving story on Joe Rogan, it'll, okay. it'll clip that section. Okay. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I like I like Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Like he's, I love him to death. He And he'll fight like 14 times a year. He doesn't yeah, give a man. shit. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a shame that him and Connor's fight didn't go down the way I thought it would. I, yeah. I, I have to say, like the only thing I have, the only way I keep up on UFC is by listen, listening to Joe Rogan talk <laughs> about it. Yeah, but I still love it. Like I have friends, like my friend Brian has Schuylkill County Brazil, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Studio down in Deer Lake. I have friends that love it, that yeah. live for the sport, and I appreciate it. It's just. You know, like anything else, I'm not. I, I'm a passive baseball fan, but I'm yeah. not like you know. It's so hard for me to stay up on anything, especially like mixed martial arts. There's because a lot more fights than there used to be. I feel yeah. like. yes, um, yes, because a lot more I'm I'm trying to stay up with current events when it comes to pop culture. And I'm trying to help. Like, that's why I'm, like, reaching out like people like you. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, if you come across stuff on the internet, like a horror con or a horror movie, yeah. post it to the page. That's why I gave everyone. Like, I'm giving yeah. more people access to put articles because it's hard for me to keep up with it. And now with the wrestling show, our wrestling show is doing really well. And wrestling's on every single yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to be a good wrestling show, you need to constantly have yeah. that, the response content to everything. Honestly, when football season comes around next year. I I don't care. Like I I I think pro wrestling has has taken that spot for me where I don't really watch anything else but pro wrestling. Okay. I can't keep up. There's just so Monday much. Monday Night Raw, which I'll watch as soon as this is over. I will then Tuesday you have AEW Dark and NWA Power, which I'm way behind on NWA Power. Then you have Wednesday, which is like the heavy hitter night. That's mm-hmm. AEW NXT. Then Thursday is Impact, which mm-hmm. I don't watch Impact, but. After going to the shoot two shows in PPW, yeah. their roster is a blast. Yeah, they're they're a great product. I, yeah, I mean, I I was very impressed by that show in Hazleton. I'm a big mark for Tessa Blanchard. So yeah, yeah, she was unbelievable. Yeah, how about Katie Forbes? What what RVD's girlfriend? Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, how about her? <laughs> how about her? I mean, I, hey, good for good for Rob, man. I mean, good for good for Katie Forbes. Yeah, you know, I, hey. I tweeted. I took because we took a picture of her butt when she was like holding the chair. Yeah, and um, and we and she actually used it on our Instagram for a little bit, <laughs> which was awesome. She didn't give us credit for the podcast, but she used the photo because I remember I went on the thing. I'm like, holy shit, dude! She took your picture. photo. Like that's our like you put that on our page, and she like he he yeah. took it and put it on because the one guy who helps us with the page also runs like a wrestling page that has over forty thousand people that follow it, mm-hmm. and some of them are pro wrestlers. Yo. So he took the photo and put it on there. And she took it off there and put it on her Instagram, which okay. is really cool. But I tweeted, I said, two ECW legends squaring off for the first time like for, in front of my eyes and yeah. like R- <laughs> with RVD versus Rhino. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and I didn't see a second of the match because Katie Forbes was at ringside. And RVD liked it, and so did Katie Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, couldn't tell you a second thing that happened in that match. That, I couldn't tell you either. That I was, missed all of it. That was an excellent night. All I wanted, I... Um, Oh man, I'm gonna blow my spot up. I had to go. I had a previous engagement. I had bought the tickets for me and Eddie to go, and then I had a friend who had a death in their family, and then mm. they made the arrangements that day. And I was like, "Well, I can't go." This is like one of my best friends. And then we got done everything, and we got done the funeral dinner, and I was like, "Well, I can make it up there." It just was bell time, like bell times in 20 minutes uh so i made it up there just in time it's a great show and then i got there and all i wanted to do beforehand i was like well they're having the meet and greet maybe i can meet tessa and the meet and greet was a little bit more i don't like to pay um for an individual meet and greet and then have to pay for the there was a a little weird thing going on with that meet and greet well that's what i had heard and how that worked to my advantage was the fact that she didn't do it until afterwards she got pissed what oh so when she when they get so what those impact people and what those stars think is like okay you walk through the curtain and what they'll like kind of what the promoter does is like hey we're paying you let's just i'm just putting because i, I kind of have mm-hmm. i don't know any numbers when it comes to ppw but they allow me to kind of be behind the scenes and help so when i say this i'm not saying it as if i know i'm privy to any information i'm just throwing numbers out there just to kind of cover myself mm-hmm. so say if they're like i'm paying rvd a thousand dollars to be here you're getting your th- your flat thousand dollars and then whatever we charge because they, they charge the meet and greet at the table then you're able to go in and walk around and get all the autographs okay so what their contract i think this is this once again this is just what i was yeah. kind of told not told but what i was kind of thinking is they said they paid an x amount for impact to be there impact then said we'll put these purple people are on the ring ppw will charge 60 bucks to, per person okay then you get this 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 and this but if you want rvd you have to pay separately yes so when the wrestlers sat down and put their two their their photos there P- the promotion was giving them the f- the poster to get autographed, and then the wrestler was like, "Well, why aren't you buying my eight by ten? And why am I signing your poster?" And I think there was a miscommunication uh, between the wrestlers, yeah. and they're like, "Well, why, why are we not getting our ten dollars per head for, for our shots?" Uh, so Tessa was like, "Fuck this," and kind of dipped. And then I guess someone said something to her, and then at the very end of the show, she was like, "I fucked up. I overreacted. I got upset." I will sign every person's autograph before they leave this building. And she did. Oh, I wish I'd known that because yeah. I just paid for a picture. I would have got the autograph for free, too. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. So if you were – so there was a lot of people who paid for the whole thing and got everyone's autograph except Tessa's. Okay. So then they were like, well, she's a huge draw. Uh, yeah, yeah, And then she was like – at the very end, they said, form a line over yeah. here. Tessa's going to go and sign people's stuff. And then that was the point I, I got to the – I had to go hit an ATM up, came back. And I was at the very, I was the very last person in line, and I was shocked because it was for the first time I'd ever got to step in a professional wrestling ring. I got to step in a professional wrestling ring with Tessa and get my picture with her. Yep. And then Emma was also in oh, there. She looked fantastic. She was standing there, and she uh, was it. Daniel Tashwood or uh, Daniel Dash, yeah. which is Johnny Morrison's wife. Oh, really? Yes. Get out. Good for him. Yeah, she's dating. She, they're, they're, <laughs> and then, so then she's standing there, and she comes up and talks to Tessa as I'm standing there, and I'm like, this is crazy. And then Rhino gets in the ring and walks up to me and says, will you take a picture with the three of us, or of the three of us? And I was like, sure. I don't like this. I'm just like, I'm like. 
this is it. This is like a great thing. The first time I'm in a wrestling ring, I'm in a wrestling ring with an ECW legend, a former uh, WWE star, and a soon to be. Who, who knows? Who, who's going to be the? F- then she turned out to be the first ever female Impact Heavyweight Champion. Yes, and then now. Uh, and that Dashwood's the women's champion at that time. Oh, yeah. So you actually were in the ring with the women's champ, the future heavyweight champ, oh, so. Emma, which is M of M, uh, UFC, I mean uh, WWE superstar, and then Rhino, who is a WWE ECW yes. Hall of Famer. So funny story. After that, I posted uh, the picture on on uh, Twitter, and I tagged Tessa in it. And then, like, I think it was the same day. Um, who was it? Uh, what's her name? Shayna Baszler was like talking shit and being like, I'm the first woman that's going to be do it. She basically it was obvious that they that WWE was feeling the swell that Tessa or Tessa was getting from from the, the champion yeah, from from um, the, the groundswell of the approach that she was having toward winning the championship. And it was obvious that they were going to make Shayna Baszler be more than she was. So they she made some comment about wrestling men and I was like, you can't be Tessa Blanchard. <laughs> and she fucking responded to it That's on awesome. Twitter. I love Shane. And she, she responded to it. And it was like, it, she was like, said something to the fact like, yeah, you know what you're talking about. And I was like, oh, I got her goat. And then, dude, for the next week on Twitter. Every asshole pro wrestling fan had to tell me how wrong I was. It was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I love they it. Bought it's hilarious. It. Yeah. It's, it's great. You know, I like, love Shayna Baszler. Yeah, she's she is. She's fantastic. wonderful. She's wonderful. Um, but what Tessa got in some trouble because there was some soup, there were some people that saying that she made racist comments. And said, yeah, and I then, heard about that. And then said that she was a bully to certain people. Yeah, I heard and, about that. Yeah. Well, you know, like it, these things are easily said now. You leave. Yeah. You know. It's like anything in life, you know. When you're a kid and you're you're raised, you, you, your character represents who you are. Yeah, you're not always going to be a hundred percent, but you try to always be at least the same person you are to every person, you know. Yep. So, yeah, that night was crazy. That night was crazy for me because we left and I was handing my. I had a bunch of pins left. Actually, I do have some. Awesome. My wrestling ones as well. These are the only ones I have left. Very I'll give nice. you one of my wrestling ones. Thank you. Um, so I was handing my pins out, and I walked, and I was like, "Oh, I have," to, and I said, "I have two fucking with pins or stickers." I think they were stickers. Stickers, I think. I said, "I have two stickers left." I said, "The next person I see, I'm just going to walk up and say, here, we're a podcast. We're going to do a full review of the show when we leave.'" Walk up to this lady in a car with her with this guy, and I thought they were putting a baby in the back seat of the car because it looked like a big like yeah th- car seat. Here it was a bag they were putting in the back seat, and I walked up. I said, "Hey, we're a local podcast. You guys should check us out. We're going to do a full review of the show." And as I hand her the sticker, don't know who it is, hand the guy the sticker, and I go, "Wait a second, you were fucking Tanisha Dash. You were fucking uh, Tyre Valkyrie's uh, valet. Like you were the mm-hmm. dude with the cat." And I was like, "That would make you." And I was like. Tyra Valkyrie yeah. and then she's like cool you guys Impact fans I said I wasn't but after yeah. tonight I am yeah. I said I thought it was a, f- a fantastic show I think you guys are amazing and I said I was here for the last Impact show because I, and I didn't know that she was with Morrison I said I'm a huge Morrison fan yeah. she goes, and she goes yeah I hear that all the time yeah I'm sure and then I was like what do you mean and she's like I was like I'm like what do you mean and she goes you don't I was like no she goes we're, we're together and I was like oh I said, uh, well, I said when he was here, like, I said it's funny that everywhere he goes, he's like Johnny Morrison, Johnny mm-hmm. Impact, Johnny Johnny Mundo. Yeah. Um. So when he was in the ring, I was like Johnny Hazelton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was laughing that I, that I did that. That's but great. It, but uh, I don't know if she ever, she kept it or threw it away. But Tyler Valkyrie has my Tornado Tag Podcast pimp. That's sticker. awesome. Yeah. So I have to ask you this, um, Hazelton. How familiar are you with Hazelton area? Mm, hit or miss. Are you familiar with a local Italian cheese that is native to Hazelton called schmutz? Sk- no. Schmutz. Schmutz. I've Schmutz. heard of it. So it's like this weird aged like mozzarella. It's freaking great. And it's like the Italian restaurants up there have it and it's strictly a Hazelton thing. Really? Yeah, you'll have to try it sometime. Yeah, I have to go and I've give it a I've heard of it. Yeah. I haven't so like, I haven't tried it. There, I've heard I'm it. actually yeah. really grateful like grateful but i'm actually fortunate that i'm helping like i'm part of a team that's starting a new wrestling company absolutely yeah and they're called high tension wrestling okay and their first show is going to be at ozzy's fun fact uh, ozzy's fun place oh that's cool and the three main guys is is uh samu 
Yeah. Or, is it Samu? One of the one of the one of the Samoans. Yeah. I, 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 Samu me. and Fatu. Uh, Fatu's yeah. dead, I think. Right. Mm, I, it's one of the Samoans, but I don't okay. remember which one. Um, which one's Fatu? Boogeyman. Okay. And Joey Ryan. Oh God. <laughs> so I, I, I may or may not have an opportunity to interview Joey Ryan. Do you have to? Do, do I'll touch his dick. Do you I don't have to hold his penis the whole time. <laughs> I will. I'll touch his dick. I don't care. Um, I'll take a. I'll take a dick flip. Um, dick oh, lollipop. Man. I'll yeah. I'll eat the lollipop. You'd, pr- you'd puke. <laughs> so do they know when they're going to do that yet? Yeah. That that's you can actually get your tickets for that now if you go to on Facebook. I'm as I'm telling you, I'm sounding like I'm doing a cheesy promo here. <laughs> but if you go to if you go to High Tension Wrestling on Facebook. <laughs> um, it, the show is called In- Inception, and it's going to be May second at five o'clock. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be fucking awesome. Is that a Saturday? Andy Hedder will be on the show. Okay. Woo. Our is boy that Andy Hedder. Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Okay. Saturday is the show. Okay. The next day, Sunday, we will. Some of the guys from the show will be going to Lancaster. Okay. To see the La Champion. Oh, Fozzie. yes. La oh, Champion. Yeah. La Champion. Champion. Yeah. I, dude, it's such a cool time for wrestling. We're hopefully, if we get finances taken care of and make some money, I would love to do the cruise. Yeah, I would love to do the cruise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything else you wanna 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 put out there? Plug. Well, let people I, go check out. I have uh, Monster Mania coming up this weekend, and then uh, the first week of April, I'll be doing the Trenton Punk Rock Flea Market in beautiful Trenton, New Jersey. They're a great crew of people that I'm glad to be seeing again. If you haven't checked that out, you should really check it out. Um, great event, all day event. I believe it's a five dollar cover. Live music all day. Two different stages. Food trucks. It's a great event. A lot of art. Um, then I also have some concert posters I'll have them coming out in the next few months for uh, Swans, Mud Honey, and Melvins, and um, also doing uh, an event at the at uh, the Colonial Theater. April 18th, John Waters Experience. He'll be there live in person. Wow. I did the ad campaign for it. Yeah. So, uh, um, do the creep. Yeah, he'll be yeah. there, um, doing a QA after the film. So, definitely Ooh. check it out. Awesome. And as always, um, check out my website, www.horrorprints.com. I'm available on Facebook at Horror Prints and Instagram at Horror Prints, Twitter at Horror Prints. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Yeah, and, thank uh, you so much for s- having me. I had send, a blast. Send your links. Anytime you have an event going on, don't okay. be afraid to post it on Not Cool in High School or okay. send it to me and I'll make sure it goes on the other pages. Sounds good. And we'll get people invited and yeah. get them there. But definitely go check out his page. Um, amazing horror movie merchandise pins. Um and uh, no, well, p- pins, and then you can, if you want your own personal art, you can contact him. And Certainly, if you if you got the dough, it'll happen. Yeah, I do pins, t shirts, toys, everything. There's yeah. always a little bit of everything going on, and as long as you're tuned in to Horror Prints at Instagram, that's where you'll find the majority of it. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. Anytime thank you want to come back, the seat's thank always you. open for you. I My appreciate pleasure. it, brother. Yeah. All right, here's some ch- uh, Church and Trains, and get you guys out of here. Without medication Can't let my thoughts run wild While I still think I got one And I care too much about my reputation And I'm tired of sleeping on this floor Yeah, I'm tired of sleeping